nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Project Dark Corona. Project Dark Corona presents Project Dark Corona podcast. Coming to you live from an underground bunker at an undisclosed location deep within the Appalachian Mountains. Bringing you the strange and unknown with your hosts, David and Jason. You're listening to Project Dark Corona Podcast. All right, welcome to Project Dark Corona. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome everybody in the chat room. How's everybody the doing? The chat room is filling up fast. It is. We love it when the chat room fills up like it does. Mm-hmm. So how's everybody doing today? All right. Doing good? Yeah. Yeah. How you doing, Jason? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Doing pretty good today. We went to Mexican before and, and had a a good meal. Oh yeah. So we're full. Mm, I had me three street. We're, e- tacos. we're either full or full of it. Mm, well, it well, might be a little of both, but you know, hey. I know our wives always say we're full of it. Yeah. So, that's yeah. the way it works. But you know, I try not to Encourage it. Yeah, encourage, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) Encourage what they say. (laughs) Even though encouragement is not needed. (laughs) So um, (laughs) normally we ask everybody to come visit us at our uh, Facebook page at Project Dark Corona Podcasts. Mm -hmm. It's hashtag Project Dark Corona Podcasts. No, it's at. Oh, I'm sorry, at project i'm i'm having of troubles because for like eight years we were project dark corona dot uh project dark corona on facebook yeah and we are no longer project dark corona on facebook we're what 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 are we we are everything paranormal paranormal. bigfoot ufos (laughs) aliens ghosts that's it that's that's our new page now because because we we were shut down by the man i know it we we talked about subjects they didn't like but you know what we're going to continue to do it because we think that that's what we're we're here to do so um and then you know come to our twitter page at project dark coro that is c o r o project dark coro on twitter and <clears throat> come to our website at projectdarkcorona.org and while you're there you can listen to all of our past shows oh man the twitter bird came a little late man well, what kind well, of twitter bird is that i don't know it's a twitter bird he's late yeah, he might have been that Mexican place eating too. I don't know. <laughs> he might have had one too many cervezas. <laughs> oh. So, um, but yeah, so <laughs> come to projectdarkcorona.org and listen to all of our past shows and, you know, join us. Join us. Also, while you're on projectdarkcorona.org, you can, if you like the show, and want to support it in any way, you can do that by becoming a patron. Patron. (laughs) How do you do that? How do you become a patron? All you do is hit that become a patron button. Man. And it'll set you right up there. All you got to do is hit that button. And if you don't want to do that, maybe just a one-time help out, you can just always hit the donate button. And remember, tonight is the big giveaway. Oh, it is. Isn't it? We're giving three gifts away tonight. Oh, yes. Three gifts. So so what do they need to do, Jason, to... Uh, to they need to be active in the chat room. Call in is a plus. Call in is a plus. Especially in the second hour, because that's when we do our call ins. Yes. Right. Yes. What else? Uh, active in the chat room. Call in. Uh... Stay on topic is for sure, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stay on topic. Yeah. I mean, we talk about all kinds of things, but we at do. least 
talk about what we're going to talk about tonight. A- absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay on topic on what we're talking about tonight, please. And what <laughs> we're talk talking about what we talked about last week because you couldn't get in last week. So. What we're talking about tonight, or who we're talking with, yes, is uh, Dean McCurry, the military medium. Mm-hmm. Telling you, I I listened to him last week on Coast to Coast, and man, I know it was awesome. I've heard it for seven days. You have, haven't you? Everybody has. I was like, woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> so Dean McCurry, otherwise known as the military medium, uh, he's an internationally acclaimed psychic medium, healer, dowser, and ordained minister. His story is so powerful. And so authentic, uh, it's unlike any other psychic medium out there. That's a great, that's a great uh, bio, isn't it? That is. Um, and that's why people from all across the globe are drawn to him for readings and personal guidance. And we're going to hear his story tonight. And it's a great story. I've I've listened to him. I watched him on youtube a couple of times and he's got a great story yes yeah and what he does is is fantastic so i'm i'm excited about it we're gonna do weird news, new, weird news. oh yeah let's do a little weird news before we bring dean on <laughs> Uh, have you figured out what we're going to talk about? Weird news I think wise? I think I might hold have up, picked up the up. subject. Hold Uh-oh. up, we got to be official. I'm sorry. <laughs> and now the weird news with David. Thank you, Jason. Oh, you're welcome. Sorry about the delay. It's okay. You know, I am. last week we didn't do one, so you know, we was that ready for it. <laughs> so. I've got some weird news on um, time travel may be possible. What do you think about that, Jason? I love time travel. What do you think? Yeah, I just watched the movie The Time Machine today. It's oh. weird how this ties in. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love that movie, Time Machine. Yeah, yeah. The, did you watch the original or the newer one? The newer one, I think, came yeah. out in 2002 or yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, it's a That's a fantastic movie. It really is. So, uh, time travel has been believed science fiction um, since the H.G. Wells wrote the movie or wrote the book, The Time Machine, in 1895. Uh, the concept continues to fascinate, and um, fictional approaches keep coming, prodding us to wonder whether time travel is physically possible and for what matter makes logical sense, in fact, of its inscrutable paradoxes remarkably last year saw both a science fiction film that illuminates these questions and a real scientific results spelled out in the journal classical and quantum gravity that may point to answers what do you think gravity gravity well you know gravity has a lot to do with time travel did you never watch like um what was it? Um, Star Trek for the voyage home where they had to slingshot around the sun to go backwards in time and then do the same to come back to save the earth. Cause they had to grab, they had to get the whale from the, from well, the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah, watched yeah. that, but yeah. I also remember, uh, Apollo 13. They had to slingshot around the moon to get back to earth. The moon. Hmm, that's weird. Yeah. In, in Star Trek, they had to do it around the sun because of the gravitational forces of the sun. But I could see it. You know, well, it's okay. You know. What you All think? right. Well, I mean, Jason's favorite show sort of ties in with time travel in a way. You know, with oh, Stargate. Stargate is major. Yeah. yeah and you're and right. then if you um, and then what was the one that Jodie Foster was in? Um, contact contact yeah that was a fantastic movie, and that was actually carl sagan was the one yes. that wrote it yes and he had talked to uh, i hope i'm not getting off topic and we tell people no to get it's off not topic. but uh he actually talked to people that was asking you know what would it take to be doing time travel right and, and like uh you remember in there it's got the big huge 
device and like in Stargate that got the big, huge device. And here's the simple way that he sort of explained it. It was like whenever it was turning, Mm -hmm. you know, like in Stargate, they have certain coordinates, but Mm -hmm. in contact, it was turning to make the thing. It's like it somehow it grabs in time Mm -hmm. one spot and then you're on the other side and it grabs that. And then it goes at this high velocity. And, and pulls you through. And pulls you through. But it, that's how they create the portal for you to go through. And right. that's how some physicist or whatever explained it to Carl Sagan. Right. And that's how, whenever he was writing that, yeah. he included it. That in makes everything. sense. That makes a lot of sense, though. Carl Sagan was, I mean, you know, he was the man. He was right on top of it, you know. Um, I used to watch his show. Yeah. All the time. Billions and yes, billions. billions and billions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll let you remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yes. Yeah, so, um. But tonight we're talking about some paranormal. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes, we are. We are. Mm-hmm. Got a great guest. Excellent guest. Dean McCurry. Yes. Oh, Zach. Too. The Zach. military medium. Mm-hmm. He's on the line right now. How you doing, Dean? Hey, I'm doing great, guys. How are you guys doing? Oh, doing excellent. Yeah, we're having a good night. How about you? I'm doing. I'm doing great. Um, I'm doing even better now that I'm on your show. And uh, I heard that you guys are giving away doing some giveaways tonight. Um, you know, how would it be if I, I sweeten your pot and you do four giveaways, and oh. I I sent you guys a gift certificate. For a half hour video reading, which typically runs a couple hundred bucks with me. Wow. wow. And you, awesome. you can Thank give that you. to a, a, a lucky uh, listener out there. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So yes. that means now we've got four gifts. So we've got one go. big giveaway and I, three I know, other giveaways. I know who's winning the one. I know who's winning the one. Who? Uh, his name is Jason. Oh. <laughs> oh, is he live in the chat room? Oh, he awesome. can be real quick. <laughs> no, no. Oh, that's hilarious. No, we we're, want, we're not hey, eligible. Thank you uh, so much. That's, that, that's fantastic. Yeah, that that's, is great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it's, it's my pleasure to do so. So, absolutely. Uh, so, um, you know, I'll, we was talking a little bit before the show, but, you know, I was listening last week when you was on Coast to Coast AM and and right. uh, and and listened to all two hours. And, and it was a fantastic show, I have to say, you know, um, and, you know, during the show, you was talking or at the beginning of the show, you kind of talked about how you became a psychic and. And, uh, and the fight that you had to, uh, to get to that point, you know, that, that you, you didn't go there, you know, willingly for sure. And it, it took a lot right. and, 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 right. um, and maybe, you know, other people would like to hear that. Cause, cause I found that pretty compelling. Right. Right. Well, yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. It certainly wasn't something that I was looking for for sure. I've heard it. Oh, it basically all started at Walmart. And uh, I saw a shirt that says, hey, I'm a psychic. And uh, I bought it. It was a medium. And end of, end of story. That's it. So I'm kidding. I'm messing with you guys. That's my <laughs> kind of humor. And that's, I was like, oh, uh, oh I'll, stick really? my, I'll stick to my day job. He's like, where? I didn't hear the Walmart piece on both ghosts. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> no. Um, you know, going back about 10, 11 years ago, um, you know, as I shared on on, uh, on the program, um, you know, going even back before that, I you know grew up in a very small town in northern Minnesota, right up on the Canadian border. And right after high school, I went right into the military. Uh, went on to serve about fourteen years with the regular army, um, and then I got out and joined the <clears throat> the Army National Guard. And in a full time capacity um, here in uh, the state of North Dakota, and I'm not originally from the state. Um, as I shared, you know, I grew up in northern Minnesota, it's just right next door, obviously. But um, it was a position that I applied for right after I got back from Afghanistan, 
And uh, it, it came down between Minot, North Dakota, and Nome, Alaska. And uh, I was like, ah, I want to get back to Alaska, but maybe I don't want to sell my truck. So <laughs> I, you know, I decided to come to North Dakota. Um, but subsequently, I went on to serve 10 years with the Army National Guard here in a full-time capacity. But, you know, in that time, in that development time, the reason that I share my background, my military background, guys, is that I was not open to psychics. I wasn't open to, you know, talking about the paranormal and all that stuff. And, you know, yeah. it, it wasn't something that was part of my vocabulary. You know, it was very much the, you know, the soldier, the dad, the, you know, I didn't identify with any of the other stuff, but. When I came back from my last deployment, uh, going back about 10, 11 years ago, it was, um, how do I want to say, shortly after that, it was like all holy hell started breaking loose in my home where clocks and pictures quite literally started flying off the wall. And for me, being the logical guy, just kind of, you know, Joe Schmo, I was like trying to figure out like, huh, maybe I didn't put that screw into the stud or mm-hmm. didn't use that drywall anchor. I think most guys would try like, you know, wife yelling at him, like, why did my clock <laughs> fall off the wall and break, you know, mm-hmm. and thinking you didn't put it up good enough. And so I'm looking, there was a lot of things that weren't making sense because there was a lot of connectors and, and different anchors and stuff that there's no way that, you know, what was coming off the wall should have. And, so I, I, I turned to my wife, who I knew um, she had confided in me when we were when I was in overseas that uh, her and a bunch of girlfriends were seeing a local psychic in my area, and I was jokingly referring to her as the the voodoo chick, right? Yeah, and was I yeah. joking terminology for her? And I said, "You and your voodoo chick friends." And uh, <laughs> for first, first, the first words out of my mouth when all this stuff started happening was get the voodoo chick on the phone, there's some weird stuff going on. (laughs) And well, and and really when you think about it, guys, though, you know, you think about it, you know, where do you go when you need, you know, more tools? Where do you go when you need, uh, you know, your, your vehicle worked on or whatever? Those are logical things. But Uh, if you don't, if you don't travel in the circles of the paranormal, like who do you call, you know, now it's going to be like, who do you call if you're having, you know, Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters, right? yeah. But, yeah, right. And I didn't, other than watching the show, you know, like everybody else in America, but, you know, it's like I didn't have any Ghostbuster on speed dial, like, you know, and, you know, quite honestly, I thought that stuff only existed in Hollywood. And until it starts happening to you, you know, personally, it's like sometimes it's kind of a hard pill to swallow. And uh, at least it was for me. And that's when I was like, you know, get the voodoo chick on the phone. There's some weird shit going on. And so she comes over. And so she starts, uh, you know, telling me that my deceased grandfather is there. And my my grandpa on my mom's side was a uh, World War One veteran. Um, and, uh, you know, nothing against grandpa, but I wasn't in a space. Uh, uh, a mind, a head space, if you will, to be taking message or be getting messages from grandpa because I just, you know, I, I was trying to figure it out. Like that doesn't make sense. Like, why would he be stepping forward? Like he's dead, right? And, <laughs> right. and instead of going, oh, that's really nice to grandpa. Like you know, and, and look into the meaning of the message. And my whole time, I was like, what this lady smoking her stage that she <laughs> and. Uh, I'm looking at my wife going, really? I just want her to stop everything going on. And I was really ignorant in the ways of how energy works and how you work with paranormal. And so long story short, she delivered the message. She did some, a little bit of cleansing and she left. And, uh, you know, nothing changed really. Uh, things actually activity picked up for me. Um, things started to get a bit crazier. And, uh, about two weeks later, after she had been there, I was washing bottles for my then newborn son. 
and we jokingly still refer to him today as our deployment baby. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, but, uh, <laughs> right. And, uh, but one of the things is that, you know, you know, I was up at, you know, at midnight washing bottles, everybody else's in bed. My daughter was about four at the time. Um, you know, so everybody was, was sleeping and, uh, you know, I just had a creeped out feeling that somebody was watching me and I kept on turning around. And of course it was a darkened living room behind me. And I was like, kind of freaked out a bit, but I was like, you know what, whatever in my head, I'm thinking, ah, I'm just, you know, maybe too tired, you know, trying to put logic to it. And like a knowing that clear consciousness washed over me that it was my grandmother, my mom's mom. Mm. And, uh, and I quite literally stopped me in my tracks and going, I, I started talking out loud to myself going, how do we know it's grandma? You know, like, how, how do you know? And, and then I'm answering myself going, I don't know, but it's grandma. You know, there was no doubt with it, like my whole, I, I could feel it in my bones, right? So maybe as you grew up, like how you felt as a youngster around your mom or your grandmother or whomever, like that loving, nurturing feeling that you always felt, right? Mm-hmm. And depending on their personality, some, you know, <laughs> might give you a swat in the butt, but uh, <laughs> you know what I <laughs> But the thing is, is that I, I was like, there's no question in my mind. My my entire being is telling me that it's my grandmother. And I was like, okay, well, it's, it's grandma. She's not here to hurt me. So, you know, but I'm like, how is she here? I'm, you know, my mind is almost like imploding trying to <laughs> figure this out. You know, it's like, so like out of the frying pan into the fire. And I was like, whatever, I'm just. I must be tired. I'm making stuff up. And so I went to bed that night knowing that she was there. And I'm laying in bed um, very much like awake, but I have my eyes closed. And I think it's natural for anybody that knows that a loved one's there that, you know, has crossed over that they just want to start talking to them. Right. They, mm-hmm. You know, because we miss them, you know. And it's like, hey, how you been? You know, kind of, you know, miss you. What have you been up to? We just want to shoot the shit. And, you know, quite honestly, um, you know, I was like, so I started doing that. But it was all one way. I wasn't receiving anything. And then it was like my drunk friend shows up. And my drunk friend is my <laughs> ego. Yeah. My drunk friend always has the great ideas, right? It's like, oh, Dean, you're making this up. You know, it's. It is, you are just, that is your, um, you know, imagination playing tricks on you. If she was really here, she would prove it. And as soon as those thoughts left my head, it was immediate, like a, like a snap, right? And snap of the fingers and the room absolutely turned frigid. And I was like, holy crap. Like what a, (laughs) you know, I just, I, I just, broke the first seal to hell, right? And that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, crap, I read about this. I know what's going on, right? And uh, so I was like, all right, she's got my attention. But then, you know, again, my ego is like, you know what, it's the way she's got the fan on. Maybe she's got a window open. You know, all these things come in. Mm-hmm. And then I, then I had a thought in my head, well, if she's really, really here, and I'm really experiencing this, she should touch me because something that visceral or that, you know, having that type of experience, I couldn't, you know, I, I can't debunk that. I could feel it. Mm-hmm. And so I still remember it like it was yesterday, right? It was a gentle yet firm pressure that started to pop my head, went to the bottom of my feet and quite literally pushed me into the bed. Now it wasn't, something like you, you hear a lot of stories about people having a becoming um, having like a paralysis and all of a sudden right. they couldn't move and you know having an entity on top of them it wasn't like that it wasn't malicious um, it was quite honestly like my body became heavier than the bed and I was sinking into the springs it was the weirdest you know, like if you think of maybe growing up in your roughhousing with your brother or somebody else, 
And, you know, and, it, you know, we've all been like pushed into the bed just a bit, maybe. And it was like, it was something that I couldn't, I was like, holy crap, this is really happening. And as soon as I, you know, I was like, wow. And I was still very conscious. I was still very much awake. But of course, again, going back to, I, I just had my eyes closed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I it like it brought up a six year old little boy in me. And I was like, all right, grandma, I love you. Well, you got to leave now, right? And <laughs> as soon as I said that, it was like another snap of the finger. Everything disappeared. Like the weight came off me. Everything turned back to regular room temperature. I mean, and I, I'm sitting up in the bed completely and, you know, covered in sweat, out of breath, going, what just happened? I'm trying to analyze myself, going, did I have some type of psychosis? Do I need to, you know, do I need to uh, repress memory from combat? What is it, you know? <laughs> and uh, I, yeah. I'm waking up my wife, and I'm like, uh, there's somebody here. And she's like, well, what do you mean somebody's here? And I was like, like a spirit. And she was like, how do you know that? And I said, right? I don't know. You need to call booty chick. <laughs> she's like, Dean, it's like, she's like, it's two o'clock in the morning. And, uh, I was, and she was like, you need to go back to bed. And I was like, well, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I was too freaked out. So I, so I think I got up and, you know, if I remember right, I watched TV for the rest, you know, until whatever time I had to go to work or whatever. I like got I remember what day of the week was. Yeah, right. Yeah, there was, uh, there was no going back to sleep. And, um, <laughs> But long story short, that was really the the pivotal point for me, the come to Jesus moment mm-hmm. of my spiritual awakening, because nothing um, up until that point, you know, shook me to my core that, um, you know, it was like, holy crap, what was that, you know? And, and I couldn't explain it, but yet I knew what I experienced, and... Yeah. I didn't have all the answers, but yet at the same time, I knew that it wasn't, you know, there to hurt me, but yet it scared the holy bejesus out of me. <laughs> yeah, being your, and, but that's, being your grandma, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, was she trying to tell you something? I mean, even if it's, well, hey, it's so late, go to bed. I don't know. I mean, yeah, well, anything. No, well, <laughs> right. Well, absolutely. She was trying to tell me something because yeah. she was trying to tell me, you know what, you're, you need to step into your abilities and you need to do it now because, um, you know, it's going to take a few years for you to figure out, you know, uh, what you're doing and then help other people. Because remember here we are, um, when I came back from deployment, I, a little backstory on everything. I was in my last three years of military service. I was getting ready to retire. I was planning to go to work for my local VA, um, you know, and it would have been a very natural transition, you know, 24 years military service, go work, uh, you know, and there I was in my early 40s, had a very natural transition. And, um, you know, and I was like, you know, why me, why now? Because like, you know, like you guys heard before, I, I was not looking for this. I didn't want it. I, you know, was did not watch those shows. I did not read those books. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why is this coming to me? And every time I tried to push it away, it would only come back tenfold and it would come up stronger. And in fact, there was a period of time where I tried to ignore it. And, uh, as I shared, my daughter was four at the time. And if you ever want to hear anything creepy, have a little girl, come into your room, right? And in that, and just in that poltergeist voice, right? The, they're here, right? The little, yeah. uh-huh. in that scene, uh-huh. right? It's like, Dad, daddy, there's a man in my room. Ooh. Oh man. If, you know, not, not Ooh. only as, as a, just a person, but as a dad, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was it. the first time I heard that, like I flew, I mean, I like about, Bold over everybody going into the room thinking <laughs> there's a dude in a room. Right. But then I got in there, flipped on the lights, and I was like, oh, like a spirit. And then mm. I was like, well, now what do I, you know what it's mm-hmm. like? So I was like, you know, I can't, I 
can't beat, beat him down. It's like, okay, so <laughs> I need to deal with it in a different way. <laughs> Um, you know, you're not going to do any good with the shotgun. So, nope. you know, <laughs> it's like, um, so really I, I went on with the journey of trying to figure out what this meant. And I went, and the only person that I knew at the time was this voodoo chick that mm-hmm. I was calling. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I got to say, she, she does not do voodoo. I, you know, I, I, we still joke today. She became a good friend and the teacher mentor. Um, but you know, she was the only one that, uh, that, that I knew that was in that circle. And I went back to her and I said, we need to figure this out. And, uh, she said, absolutely. And I went in and, uh, and she said, well, it's pretty simple. You're a medium. And I said, I don't want to be a medium. Take it back. (laughs) <laughs> and, she, I, I, and, she, and she laughed at me and she was like it does not work that way and I said well I said I don't care how it works and I said I don't want it and she was like well good luck with that you'll figure it out and that was pretty much the conversation because we um, after we figured out what my purpose was it was to help people in a completely different way and uh, so I kind of stormed out of her office thinking, God, she doesn't know what she's talking about. And here, you know, and I was just, cause I wanted a certain outcome. I didn't want <laughs> what she was telling me. I didn't like what she was telling me. And how many times you've heard that? Right. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, long story short, it was, you know, I, it wasn't going away and it only got louder. And I started all of a sudden, like somebody flipped a switch for me. I started getting messages all of a sudden but I didn't know how to access them. And I was like, okay, if I am a medium, what does that mean for Dean McMurray, not uh, James Sam Frog or anybody else on TV? What does that mean for Dean McMurray? Mm. And so I started consuming the books and I started reading and I started hitting the internet and, you know, and really trying to figure out what the learning about it. But I was like, this was fine for those guys, but I was like, I'm me. Like, I'm not James Van Prague. And so I quite honestly was joking, and I said, what, am I going to be giving readings, you know, in my <laughs> basement? Or And, you know, it's kind of funny because I could just envision, like, one of my spirit guides or somebody going, uh, yeah, you're going to be given readings in your garage and your basement <laughs> and a tour boats and Ubers and anywhere else that we ask you to. And, uh, you know, like slapping their forehead going, God, this guy, he's just stupid, right? And that's what I think they were drinking. They were day drinking. I think my spirit guys were. And uh, I think that's the problem. And, uh, but then maybe I drove and drink. That was probably the case. But, um, you know, quite, <laughs> quite honestly, I, I started going on, you know, I, I started baby steps as far as going back to that same psychic in my area. And I took a, a couple of classes learning about angels and such. And I, I really started, um, started self-development and saying, well, if, If it's not going away, I made the determination that I need to understand what it is because it was like waking up and all of a sudden finding that you had extra thumbs. It's like, okay, that's cool, (laughs) but what do you do with them, right? Now do I, I got to buy all those, all new gloves, right? Like, what the hell do I, you know? And so it's like, so, you know, going forward, it was, I ended up taking a course in mediumship and, it was suggested that I practice for a year. And you got to remember those two guys is like during this whole time, it was Dean the soldier by day and Dean the medium by night. It almost sounds like a new Marvel comic, right? Did you have a, some different type of outfit that you put on or anything? Or? I, I, I did. I did. It was like a, a you know, a, a lycra, like a, 
fan deck. It was, it was, it was flattering. It was, okay. I, I was a few pounds slimmer back in those days, you know. I was and, uh, pretty spry, so, uh, you know, I looked pretty good. Pretty good going. But, you, you know, you had to catch you at night, you know, with those reflectors. You're such a jokester. So, uh, I love it. I love it. Right? So, no, I'm serious. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, with the underwear on the outside and everything, just like right, Superman, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's right. But, um, but you know, and if anybody's from Marvel or or whomever, you can get a hold of me. I'll provide my phone number later. But, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, go. You know, I, you know, really that transition of, <clears throat> and I was really trying to keep both lives separate because mm-hmm. I didn't want anybody in the military to find out early on that I was having this happen because I didn't want to be the quote unquote, that guy, mm, you know, cause I was yeah. like, yeah, you they, know, and they wouldn't I be kind, worried, would what, they? Well, oh. I was worried what they were going to say and yeah. what they were going to do. I really was. And it wasn't until I got really in my last year of service that I became what I called a grumpy old guy. And I didn't care. I was like, <laughs> What are you going to do, Ben? My dog takes, make me retire. Like, you know, and I had a really good relationship with the senior um, command staff, right? And uh, my commanders and other folks. And and here I was, a senior enlisted uh, member. I retired at the E7. And um, so, you know, and, and, you know, quite honestly, they, a lot of a lot of those folks, uh, respect of what I said. And I, you know, I kind of like earning their respect and, and I went back and forth and I didn't want to lose that quite honestly. Wow. And, but after a while I was like, you know what, that isn't me anymore. Like it is, but like, this is who I am. And as I started accepting who I was as a medium, you know, more and more, um, it was like, I couldn't hide it. It was like, you know, it was like coming out of the closet. It was like, <laughs> ta-da! you know, it's like, I'm Hey here. everybody. And yeah, I'm here. Like, you know, and quite honestly, that's, you know, um, it, there was a period of that where I did have to come out publicly because when I came out as a, you know, with social media, um, when I created a business page and I was like, I was really scared because I knew that, my mom and dad, you know, be seeing it. I knew that my family, my my siblings, you know, uh, my, you know, I already had the major support of my wife and my kids, but you know, and that's huge. But you know, I was like, what about everybody else that I know, you know? And I was always worried about what other people felt or thought of me. You're like, and then uh, when I let, you're like, I'm not gay. I'm a medium. <laughs> <laughs> you're, yeah. right. you're right you're right well it, you know what's interesting though two guys is that when i came when i came out as a medium um it was interesting that my mom kind of laughed and she goes well that makes total sense i looked at her i was like what what are you talking about like how did you know and you know and she was like oh you uh you always have like make her what we call make believe friends and this, that, the, and I was like, nobody reminded me. Like, <laughs> like I couldn't remember that stuff. Right. Yeah. And, I bet, um, I bet, I bet like, they was like wiping their brow and saying, thank God. Yeah. He's Ooh. a medium. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, what I'm wondering is since your grandmother was the one that contacted you, I don't know, maybe she had the gift and, you know, cause families didn't talk about this type of stuff, you know, that's right. Yeah. Um, well, not that I'm aware of, and I've talked to my mom about, you know, uh, as far as I'm aware, my grandmother was very intuitive. However, as far as like, you know, the gift of knowing or premonitions, however, she wouldn't be what we would label as truly psychic. And, um, that wasn't, uh, that actually came out to be on my dad's side of the family, which is very interesting, um, where one of my aunts actually, you know, when my dad shared what I was doing with his sister that lives in Canada, and she said, oh, well, that's just like Aunt Millie or whatever. Don't you remember her? She used to read tea leaves and stuff and hmm. uh, do people's fortunes, I don't know, you know, back in the day. And don't you remember that? And he was like, no, you know. 
and uh, must have been, you know, my dad was the youngest of, of the children and his family. And, um, but, um, yeah, so it was very interesting to find out things that I never knew. Um, you know, when it comes by, yeah, you're right. It's, uh, sometimes it does not all time, not all the time does it follow a generational lineage and like saying, Oh, your, your grandmother is the one that came forward. Did she have, you know, where she touched with the gift and saying, no, not, not that I'm really aware of other than, you know, maybe being intuitive and, um, but the, the aspect of, uh, the reason that I believe that she stepped forward that evening is because I had a deeper connection to my grandmother mm. um, that it was somebody that would be comforting um, stepping forward. It was saying that, you know, I would recognize her energy signature without a doubt, because remember what I said, I, it was, was undeniable. Like, I just know that it's, you know, it's his grandma. You know, like, oh, how do you know? Well, you know, like, you know, keys, keys back to, you know, when, when you're a kid, how you felt around grandma, like, you know, it's in your bones. It's, you know, there's like right. a memory imprint. Was and there any or, smells or anything that was well, familiar? You know, um, you know, back in that night, I don't remember any smells, but since then, you know, absolutely. Do I get, you know, smell sense? Um, I have a, my wife has a, a, a uncle that's deceased and, uh, we call him, well, his name's Carl. And, uh, the first I never got to meet him prior to passing. Um, uh, but I guess he was kind of a hell ra- raiser back in his day. And, uh, the first time I was laying my son down, um, that he showed up in spirit, um, he kind of leaned over the bed and blew smoke right in my face. Oh, and nice. it was clear, oh, oh, <laughs> and it was nasty. I, I don't smoke. Yeah, me neither. And so, uh, yeah, and I was like, <laughs> so every time, so I, when I came downstairs, I had said to my wife, I said, there's somebody blowing smoke in my face. And then I gave her a description of who, you know, I said, this is this race car driver. I said, he's dressed in like an old school jumpsuit type deal. And she said, that's my uncle Carl. He used to race race cars and oh. do all this. Thing. And I said, well, that's crazy. I said, tell me to quit blowing smoke in my face. <laughs> so every time, every time he wants to show up, he knows he thinks it's funny. He'll blow smoke in my face. Mm. And then I yell out down to my wife, you know, Marilyn, your uncle Carl's here. You know, like if you're showing up at the door, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, put some coffee on. You know, it's like, yeah. so, that's awesome. So it's, yeah, so sometimes it gets, we joke, we keep it light because it can get so heavy, right? Because we're always talking about death. We're talking about the way people died. Um, and it's not all, you know, it's, I always say it's not all unicorn farts and puppy dog kisses. It's some, it, it can be heavy. And because we're talking about people grieving and we're talking about people in pain. And so if I have the opportunity to keep it lighthearted, I try to do that because of the work that I do. And I, that's really kind of my personality anyway. Um, I always kind of choke around and my kids would tell you that that's probably, they don't know if I'm ever serious because I'm always joking around, but uh, probably infuriates my wife a lot. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, you know, it, it, it's always interesting. You know, I've had some interesting experiences over the years, and, uh, but certainly it's, it's very humbling work, and it's uh, very interesting, to say the least. That's awesome. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back, um, if that's okay with you, Dean. No, that's great, guys. Okay. Um, you're, you're listening to Project Dark Corona? With uh, Jason and David and Lee. Yeah, I'm here. Lee's here. Oh, yeah. we got (laughs) to hear from our sponsors. That's right. And uh, we're talking to Dean McMurray, uh, the military medium. And uh, this is going so awesome that I really don't even want to take a break. But I guess we We have to give people a a break break. to where they could go use the restroom if need be. That's right. So, (laughs) so, (laughs) So we'll be right back after these messages. 
You're listening to You're listening You're listening You're listening Project Corona Hey, this is Jeff Reagan with the band Catalyst. You're listening to Project Dark Corona with David Reagan and Jason Scott. Welcome to Willow Branch Botanicals, natural, healthy alternative products. Here we use only the best plants to grow and produce CBD-derived products and other wonderful essential oils. Plants are grown and monitored carefully to produce the best raw materials for quality product. Harvesting and processing are managed with strict good manufacturing practices and food safety requirements as our top priority. With the use of our up-to-date lab and modern food quality processing equipment, we are able to produce wholesome hemp and CBD products and other essential oils. Once packaged and sealed, the end product is stored securely until ready to be shipped. We take pride in every step of the process, even to the shipping out to you as a customer. For more information, visit us on www.willowbranchbotanicals.com or Facebook Willow Branch Botanicals. Thanks for listening to Project Dark Corona on Podbean. If you like our show and would like to support it, you can by becoming a patron. Just click on the box that says Become a Patron and sign up. We have different options that you can choose from to support us. Uh, Some of the perks becoming a patron include bonus content, free gifts, and the feeling of being part of the show. So thanks and continue listening to Project Dark Corona. Hey everybody, this is Matt Sieber from EastTennesseeBigfoot.org. You're listening to David and Jason at Project Dark Corona Radio. Thanks for listening to Project Dark Corona. You can find us on Facebook at Project Dark Corona Podcast. All of our shows are posted in the events section. You can also find us on Twitter at Project Dark Coro. We have a webpage at projectdarkcorona.org. You can sign up and become a member. You can post blogs and listen to past shows. So remember and listen to Project Dark Corona podcast.
<clears throat> All right, welcome back to Project Dark Corona. Welcome back. Welcome back, Lee. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> Hopefully everybody had time to get done what they need to do because we got a lot of uh, questions for Dean. And yes, if we do. You, if you have anything to ask him in the chat room, you can ask us there or when we do open up the phone lines here in just a few minutes, you can call in and ask him. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, remember, be active in this chat room. Call in when call in time comes. Especially. Call in, be active, and you might just be a lucky winner of four prizes. We've got uh, four to give away now. We got three Project Dark Corona mugs. Yes. With a little surprise inside of them. We're not going to say what. Yep. But you'll have a little surprise inside of the three. And then our grand prize, thanks to Dean. Mr. Dean McMurray. Uh, the military medium. He's given away a uh, reading, thirty-minute reading, uh, for the lucky winner. That's going to be the grand prize now. That I mean, is the grand just, prize. That's just awesome. Yeah, I just I can't say. Anything. I hope I hope that Dean gives me a free reading uh, <laughs> in a few minutes because I've got a question for him Uh-oh. after a while. Oh, Here but we go. Uh, anyway. Well, you do got a PayPal account, just in case. Yeah, right? I've got PayPal. <laughs> I, I can pay him. It don't matter. <laughs> How you doing, Dean? <laughs> I, I'm I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I I didn't know we were supposed to go to the bathroom on the break, so I I, I brought Uh-oh. the phone in the bathroom. So Uh-oh. that's okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Don't oh, that's that's all right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just when just when. I'm, just when it happens, just say, hit the button. Hit the button. <laughs> hit the button, <laughs> man. Uh-oh, hit the button. <laughs> we we had that happen one time on the show. Uh-oh, hit the button. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <funny>. yeah, <laughs> that was one of our older shows, but it was it was hilarious. It became, it became something that we talked about for months and had people go back and listen to just because it was funny. Oh, goodness. It, 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 it's it's that, and the other thing is, is don't go to the uh, bathroom while you're mic'd up if you're uh, doing a, like <laughs> anything for film or TV. Uh, <laughs> mic'd up is like relieving yourself, and it's like, you know, your mic is live, right? It's like, oh, okay, well. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. That's, like, thank that's you. what editors get paid for, right? They, they do all that right, editing. Right. Yeah. 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 My but luck, but this is live. <laughs> 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 we are live <laughs> in living color. We're from the bunker. Uh, live right. from the bunker. Yeah. <laughs> so and undisclosed, and undisclosed location. Undisclosed yeah, uh, Appalachian <laughs> Mountains. <laughs> Sweetness, uh, she wants to thank you for your service, and I think I do too. Me and everybody here at Project Absolutely, Earth, yes. Yeah. Thank, oh, thank you for you. your service. That's one thing Absolutely. that. We probably forgot to say at the beginning, but we yes. do thank you for your service. Absolutely, yes. I'm well, thank you. And uh, we do got a question from Qu- Sweetness as well. Uh, do you ever get high pitched ringing in your ears when someone's trying to get through to you? Yeah, you know, sometimes I, you know, <laughs> it's kind of hard. Like when you spend as many years as I have in the military, it's like, is that for not wearing earplugs or is that? Spirits trying to get through. I have to differentiate <laughs> sometimes, um, but um, no. You know, that's a class action did. lawsuit for that. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that's what I'm told. That's what I'm told. No, but um, what I would share is that um, yes, yeah, at times um, there does get a high pitch ringing. Um, you know, spirits trying to get through or whatever. And it's really just any entity that is on a high frequency, right? It's like we hear like sometimes like a solid tone or it can sound like, a, you know, like a, a record that's been turned on super high, right? It's like it's intelligent. You can't, you can't understand it um, initially, but it's, it you know it's it's so high frequency until we raise our frequency to match it. But yeah, I, I totally get what she's saying. Absolutely, I've had it happen. Now, since all of this, like you said, you had to go get that voodoo chick to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, how, right, what, right. What was a way where you were able to um, 
you know, help things out, uh, learn your gifts that you did? What, what was some things that you were able to do? Well, number one, I, I would say is that, you know, if anybody's out there listening tonight, maybe, and they're just starting their journey, number one, and, and that's certainly not connected to uh, this book at all by any means. I don't get any kickbacks or nothing. But it was recommended to me to read John Edwards' book, The Infinite Quest. That was the first recommendation for me on my development. And basically the reason in the infinite quest, John Edwards, talk, he, he, read, he wrote a great book there, really talking about setting boundaries with spirit. Um, and really in a no-nonsense language, he really asks you why you want to become a medium. Um, and really it, it infuriated me because I... <laughs> And because uh, I, I went back to that psychic and she said, did you read the book? And I said, yeah. I said, I'm more confused now than ever. I said, <laughs> you know, it's got done asking me, why do you want to meet him? And why, why do you want to be a medium? And every time I said, I was like, I don't like, I, I felt like I was like, you know, finding some euphoric, you know, moment. I was like, I don't, I don't want to be a medium. Like, and so I said, I'm more confused. But the the parts where it talks about how to ideas to set boundaries with those in spirit, so they're not always bugging you, so you can find some peace um, as you go about life. Mm. Um, you know, and and trying to. I don't want to say like an on-off switch, but to help you develop more a boundary with those in spirit so they're not so invasive. Um, because if you don't, quite honestly, I've heard, you know, I've connected with people over the years. I like, oh my God, being, you know, uh, I have all these dead people that will not leave me alone. And it's like, yeah, you're not, you know, you're not setting boundaries with them. It's like, eventually you have to get down you know, kind of, uh, I don't want to say get pretty stern with them, but in a sense you do. And it's like, you know, listen, you guys are dead. Not Nothing against you guys, but you don't need sleep. I do. You know, you don't. <laughs> you know, so here's, here's visiting hours. Here's when you can chat with me. And that's what I ended up doing is um, I set, basically, I set rules up for spirits and, if you want to deliver a message, um, you know, to me or somebody else, um, you can do it, you know, kind of like their Monday through here's my operating hours. And, and then once a week I sat down, um, at a certain time every week and I basically took paper and I wrote down their messages, whoever, it didn't matter who they were stepping forward. It could be, somebody's grandma that I didn't know. And I just, I just wrote it down and I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was allowing them a, a, a platform to speak. And because they wanted to come to me for some reason. And, um, I was like, all right, well, I'll let you do that, but understand that, you know? So, um, and so, yeah. So that's why I did the beginning. And then as I learned how to harness my abilities, um, you know, after taking a course of mediumship and really practicing for a full year, um, you know, trying to figure out how it worked for me, um, then, you know, it just kind of, uh, I don't want to say I just kind of did it, but it was, it was already happening. It just organically started to unfold. And that was just part of the process. It was like, Ready or not, here we go. Let's go. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, 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 hang on, whoa, oh, hang on. It's like, no, we're either you run with us or we're going to drag you, and, and that's that's what it kind of felt like. And um, you know, and it was like, all right, well, I, some of it, what you know, I got dragged. Some of it, uh, you know, I learned to run pretty quick, and it was uh, kind of the out of the frying pan and the fire type deal. So, for sure, you know. Um... When I was a kid, well, I'll say little, I was three years old. And um, what you said earlier means, you know, says a lot to me because I was three. Um, we had moved here from Tennessee to uh, Texas at the time. And I started getting um, woke up every morning. It was about three o'clock every single morning. 
by spirits. Um, now, being three years old, they scared the you-know-what out of me. Um, and I would run from them. And um, I did this, you know, for a couple of years, all the way up to about the time I was about five. Um, didn't Didn't worry about what was going on or nothing. I just know that they woke me up. And they chased me around the house. <laughs> and um, and by the time I was five, I, I turned one night after they chased me for a minute. And I said, I'm not afraid of you no more. Now, it didn't stop the, uh, you know, the haunting in the house or nothing. It did stop them from waking me up at three o'clock in the morning and chasing me around right. the house. Um, but I wonder, you know, do you think that, you know, now being older and looking back at it, do you think that they were trying to get a hold of me to uh to, you know, get through me to ask ask something or 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 something like that? I mean, I'm I'm I I'm just kind of cu- curious about it. Yeah, 100%. I believe that um, you know, because you when you stopped when when you said you know, I'm not afraid of you anymore. And when you kind of stepped into your power at that moment, spirit stopped, right? They respected yes. your boundary. You, yes. you set a boundary in that moment. And, you know, and when you did that, spirit respected that. And all of a sudden it's like, Ooh, okay, all right, cool. But we're still going to hang out yeah. in the home. <laughs> and so, you know, right? It's like, well, we'll, we'll sit on the couch instead of chasing you around. Right. <laughs> and so, right? Um, but the thing is, is a hundred percent, I believe that we're all infinitely surrounded by spirit all the time. Um, for some people that are sensitive and that can feel, see, sense, whatever, sometimes that scares the holy but Jesus out of them. And especially kids, that happens a lot. And they don't know because of something new to them. They're not, they're, and, and in reality, if you're a past life believer, you know, yes. um, you're re-remembering their abilities. Um, but it's interesting because they don't remember it in this life. You know, they're, they're young. And like you shared, it's like, you know, um, here it was happening, you know, for, for quite some time. Mm-hmm. And so they would chase you around the house. Yes. And, you know, more in a probably a playful manner, but saying, Hey, we're trying to get your attention. We want to communicate with you, but you just perceived it as scary. Yes. And that, that is very common. Like, it's like, no, 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 <laughs> stay away from me. You know? <laughs> and it's like, no, dude, I got a message for you. It's like, no, I really, I'm good. You know? And <laughs> so when you're three, you're not thinking, Oh, kumbaya, let's sit down and have a chat. It's, get the, you know, get the F away from me. And, right. you know, kids don't, they're not thinking in that progressive way. They're thinking fright or flight. And, um, you know, and it's, it's very common. So yeah, hundred percent. I believe that they're, they were trying to communicate with you then. Um, and that's great that you, at some point you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm not scared anymore. <laughs> and it's just like, Oh, okay. While we're still here, it's right? Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and and you know, there's been times that I still see them now. Um, right. The last house that I lived in, um, I've se- I seen some spirits in there. Uh, they they were kind enough to show themselves to me, and nice. uh, and you know, it. I'm to the point now. You know, I've like again, I've seen them since I was three. Uh, stuff like that doesn't scare me at all. And, um, and so I see it now as, you know, more, what is it, you know, what is it that you might want? Um, I haven't got the, I I don't, I I can say I don't have the ability to talk to them, I guess. Um, I've, I've been able to see them, um, and uh right. you can't hear them i i I'm, i definitely don't know that i'm claro claro audience at all um now i have caught and jason was there you know we've caught some evps when we were talking to him a, a couple right. of times but um you know for me you know, it's not a scary subject 
when right, when right. It, when it goes to talking to um, things that are, you know, not alive anymore or or spirits or whatever it is. So, um, you know, right. when it comes to stuff like that, how did you feel at first when you really started hearing these things? I mean, did you was you scared or was you kind of? No, I think by that time, to be honest with you, David, like by that time, like I was kind of like, I could feel like they're, you know, that they didn't mean any harm. And like, I had already had this big, mm-hmm. like to the moment. So it wasn't, um, you know, it, like, I guess it wasn't like, you know, it was like, all right, the, the big flash bang is, is already over. So the, right. You know, I, I, you know, I could kind of feel it's like now nah, they're, you know, they're not, they don't mean me any harm. They're just, they're kind of hanging out, so to speak. But I would share back, you talk about like, you don't feel that you're clear audience. You know, Jason was talking to me before we went live and he said that you were clear intoxicated. So that's something entirely different. <laughs> no, I'm just with this. no, but, um, but um, that was my lame attempt at humor, by the I way. Love it. But, um, that was good. Yeah, I love it. That was a good, good attempt that was, of humor. That was fantastic. <laughs> my par- that was my paranormal humor. That, that are, was my are you one, sure you were that wasn't was a comedian before? <laughs> right. Past I was going to say, I, I, I had a lady that's going back a number of years, going back, and I did a, a gallery uh, in a little town uh, in rural North Dakota here and, and and she said I don't I don't think I've ever laughed so hard she goes um, <laughs> you should become a stand up comedian and I was like no no I really shouldn't <laughs> and I was like just for whatever reason I was I was feeling really funny and um, you know and I was like so I'm glad everybody else felt I was funny because you know but and and, and, and I want to add too you know there, there's a point to it obviously it's if somebody is grieving deeply and, you know, I do it within respect. Um, I don't, uh, you know, I, I don't do it to be like, uh, you know, do something very disrespectful and try to make a, make a funny out of it. That just would be very, very awkward. And, um, but I, I, I do want to say is that, yeah, you know, it's, um, it's interesting because a lot of kids are more sensitive and actually a lot more adults are more sensitive than they want to let on. I don't think, I think people right. are, um, you know, kind of, you know, go back to the aspect of being in the closet still. They don't want to be that person. Um, but yeah, what, when I started to have my experiences and when I would start seeing or hearing things, it's, um, you know, it, it wasn't really, free, you know, after a while it wasn't freaky anymore. It was just like, okay, that's part of the, that's the new normal. I say, you know, that's the nice new term now. The new normal, <laughs> and 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 it really was. It really was. It was like, you know, it, it because in that, I want to say, really in that um, three-year time span of my development, um, you know, right before I uh, uh, retired. Really, the first year felt like I was going a million miles an hour with spiritual development and just so much was happening in a short amount of time um, that, I mean, everything from, you know, I swear to God, spirit was having a, a party in my kitchen one night. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, they were in my laundry room slamming cabinets another night. I was like, and then, and they were making this a crazy amount of racket. And I even, I yelled actually, and do some damn laundry while you're down there. You know, I'm like, <laughs> right. you know, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, you might as well, it's like, why not? But, you know, it's interesting though, is, you know, if you can be comfortable around it and really look beyond what is, because it's not about them. It's not about them just showing up. It's about them being recognized. Like you said, um, David, like you were saying that, you know, why they were showing up was it more about like, Hey, I got a message for you or whatever. And so looking into that and, and a lot of times I think guys, I think that fear just wants to be validated. Mm, I think right. they just want to, because how bad would that suck? If you were invisible to everybody sitting around you currently, 
And they were going on, drinking, doing the podcast, whatever, having a great old time, laughing. And you're like, dude, I'm right here. I'm like, hello, right? right? And But everybody was ignoring you, and you were doing everything you could to try to get their attention. And maybe there was one person that said to them that kept on looking out of the corner of the eye like, I know you can see me, you know, and you're like, I know, like, hey, don't ignore me. Like, I know. <laughs> and so in your mind, what I always tell people is if there's somebody out there right now that are listening or maybe listening to the recording later, you know, all you have to do, you don't have to make it a big grand thing. You can simply in your mind saying, I, I recognize and validate you. Like, I see you. Um, I know you're here. And that's sometimes all it takes. But, you know, you can also ask them, you know, what, what would you, you know, what message do you have? Do you, you know, uh, can you show me a sign, you know? So a little bit of dialogue, just because, as uh, David, I think, talked about being clear audience, you don't have to be clear audience to communicate with spirit. Um, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different mediums communicate in different ways. Maybe you're automatic writer. Maybe you feel the, you know, the, the need or the urge to write and maybe that spirit being channeled through you. Um, maybe you see, uh, my wife, uh, interesting enough, a lot of times when she gets spirit stuff, like she gets, um, songs. Mm. And uh, she she hears a lot of different, you know, she's like, I keep on hearing the song. And then so obviously we look into the meaning or the lyrics. Sometimes I'll do that. If you guys ever follow my social media stuff, every Monday I do what's called Monday Messages from Spirit. And it's like a community reading. And I just kind of, tune, you know, kind of tune into Spirit and see what the, what the message that Spirit wants to convey to whomever reads the message. And... Um, you know, it's interesting. There's been a few times where I've gotten lyrics and saying, hey, for what, and it could be something significant. Maybe it's uh, coming up on, I, in fact, I got a, an email one time after posting one of those and, um, and a lady <laughs> said, um, you know, it, uh, my husband passed however many years and we're coming up on our wedding anniversary here this week or whatever. And the song that you posted um, had a lot of meaning, you know, to that. And so I just wanted to say thank you and how much it meant. And I'm like, you know, that to me means the world because I'm like, that's why I do what I do. I mean, it just validates right. going back then. You know, it's, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's not, you know, it's about, it's about the message. It's right. about delivering the message that's meant to be delivered at right. the end of the day. And that's that's what kind of got me is is um, my son saw something when he was a kid too, and one day we were talking and he asked me. He said, "Dad, do you think that when you were younger and these things were chasing you around the house, that they were trying to tell you something?" You know, <laughs> and, and you know it was a perspective I hadn't really thought about at the time. Probably and, and trying I, to get you right. to notice. And, and I was like, you know, I don't know. I was three up to the time I was five. All I know is that they really didn't exist, and I knew that they didn't exist, and they scared the you know what out of me. How you know? do you remember when you were three? No, I could remember back to when I was like one or two. Yeah. Well, you must have an wow. alpha memory. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a pretty good memory because I can't. Rem I can remember back to when I was about six or seven. That's about it. Oh, I I remember back. Yeah, I remember back to when I was about like one or two. So, of course, I'm an old man now. <laughs> I know you got us by four years. So yeah, yeah you're yeah. old man compared old, to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think, Dean? <laughs> what, 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 uh, I'm not saying nothing like that. <laughs> okay, I'm 50. Dave's 46. Yep. I just turned 46. Just yeah. turned 46. Well, April 4th. You're 46. It I'm don't 46 matter now. if you just yeah. turned but it or whatever. I just turned whatever. 46. And I'm 46. Okay. Yeah. We, I'm, I got four years on you, and I yeah. still can't remember. 
Yeah. Well, it's a darn good thing that I'm it's still in my 20s because, I know. Uh, you know. But, <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, right. 24 <laughs> years in the military and he's still in his 20s. Yeah, he's, uh, he's 27 years old. Yes. Uh, well, don't, don't, don't you know, as part of that uh, military uh, experiment that that's uh, right. kind yeah. of put us in a, in a time. Oh, spin, you was right? up so in Montauk, like, New York, wasn't you? Yeah, yeah. That's where you were stationed at. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was in. Uh, I actually was in Watertown, New York. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but, uh, seriously. Uh, no, no. I, I, I turned, I turned fifty-one this March. So, yeah, um, I'll, I'll be fifty-one so, yeah, in August. Right, right, well, oh, there you go. So, so we're, you was born in seventy, right? All, we're all contemporaries. It, it, <laughs> he was born it, in seventy. Is a good year, good vintage. Yeah, there year. you go. It, it's just like wine gets better with time, right? That's, it. Like, uh, <laughs> that's what I that's what I tell myself, anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I try to tell myself that, but my wife looks at me and just shakes her head. You know, that, whatever. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Are you ready to uh, get a little serious? Uh oh. We got it. We do have someone that has a question for us. Uh oh. Yeah, let's do, do it. Let's do it. Yeah, it's Uh-oh. Jason. Oh, Jason's got it. Jason. Jason. I do. I do. And, and it, only if you're comfortable with doing it over the phone. Uh, yeah, we can. Um, my brother passed good. away about a year ago. It'll be a year ago in June. And I was with him for seven months, you know, during all this time. Uh, when he got sick and. And I stayed with him every day and, and I had to make the decision on what to do, you know? Uh, but I was just wondering if there's any messages that he might have for me. Right. Right. Well, I I would say the first thing, you know, with that Jason is that, you know, uh, it's interesting because it's a lot of, a lot of responsibility and a lot of weight, right. For somebody that is, Yes. I don't want to say the caretaker, but sometimes the decision maker in the the final days, right? right. Um, and and uh, it can it can be a bit of a heavy weight or a burden yet to still carry. It's like, did I make the right decision? And uh, you know, does he you know did he approve of that um, and everything else? But the first thing that I want to share is. Um, you know, the biggest thing that I want to share is that um, is that you certainly made the right decision um, for him. Uh, it's interesting because even though your brother feels like he's a scrapper, um, he's a fighter, but really, in, as you shared in the final days, I, I mean, it was apparent for everybody that you know, as far as his health, it wasn't going to, it wasn't getting any better. And, but the aspect of, you know, letting you know that you made the right decisions based on him. And the other thing is, is that, you know, it's just almost like he's like, yep, that's, that's the way that I would, I didn't, you know, I wouldn't want to be there just hooked up machines and, and, uh, just being something, um, in a sense of, of, you know, where somebody could come and just visit, you know, a being, if you will. It's really not even me there anymore. Um, so understand that that aspect for you is letting you know the decisions and the direction that you guys took is, is certainly the right one. Um, it's interesting because he talked about his legacy. Was Did he have children as well? Uh, no, he had stepchildren. Yeah but no children. Oh, okay. All right. So stepchildren. But, you know, the biggest thing is, is um, when it comes to that, is it, it, it's interesting because it's still talking about um, really coming back and, and uh, um, you know, still visiting and, well, and sharing space with them, if that makes he's, sense. He had... Uh, nieces and nephews that are really young. I mean, my kids are right. six and seven, so, and he loved right. them to death. Right. Yeah, that totally makes sense. So, 
as far as, uh, you know, coming back and visiting with the kids and kind of looking over them and, and everything else. But, um, you know, really just sending you guys a lot of love, Jason, you know, he's, uh, not that he would admit it, uh, but you know, he really, while he was alive, but you know, really loves everybody. And, uh, that's something that, uh, you know, wouldn't say that he are, but, um, you know, there's, there's an aspect of him that was kind of the, you know, the Hellraiser and everything else. But, um, <laughs> yeah. for him, it's, uh, you know, um, he's just talking about that. Uh, thank you for being the, the brother that he always needed, not the one that he always wanted, but the one that he always needed. So, you know, kind of the, the, if I could say, you know, the kick in the ass, what he needs sometimes. And, and uh, also the, the rock to uh, kind of be supportive. Um, so that makes sense for you. It does. I appreciate that. But, yeah, absolutely, Jason. Yeah. But, yeah, certainly uh, um, kind of a, it really, you know, he does have a really fun energy with him and, you know, somebody that, uh, certainly would have been really fun to uh, know back, you know, when he was still living and, um, you know, give anybody a run for his money. So, um, yeah, he, for he, sure. he was in a band. He loved music and, uh, he, I don't know. He, I was with him till the, I was there when he passed away. I mean, I was holding his, sure. I had my hand on his chest when he took his last breath and, uh, I've just felt responsible for it for some reason. I don't know why, but, and it, and it all happened quick. I mean, I know seven months sounds like a long time, but he got sick quick. He woke up right. sick. That was it. And it was over. Rest of his life was in the hospital. Yeah. But I appreciate the, yeah. the, 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 no, reading. absolutely. No, uh, absolutely. Yeah. That's certainly, uh, uh, I would love for him to come visit me. And you said he visits my children. I, th- I think, I think he does. Cause I see things. Yeah, absolutely. It's weird at my house. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But, but, uh, no, the biggest, I mean, the biggest thing for you, Jason, we, you talked about, I mean, you even said it in your own words is that, you know, that kind of the guilt that, that you carry around. And that's his biggest thing is that, you know, he's hoping that you don't choose to continue carrying that because that's, you know, wasn't, uh, it's not your fault and there's nothing that you could have done. But although it's like, you know, it's like, well, I still feel like I should have been able to do something, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things, but, um, uh, but that's the biggest thing is talking about, you know, that guilt aspect. That yeah. makes sense. To you. I just, I just hope he's happy and, and I want him to know oh, that yeah. I, yeah. I, I do have, uh, uh, another unbiological brother that takes care of me pretty good, David. So, nice. uh, nice. but, uh, you know, the biggest thing with that though, is that he is in a good place. Um, you know, and, um, he's, you know, I guess essentially doing well, if, you know, and, uh, you know, I think of being in heaven and around everybody else and getting plenty as, as he puts it, plenty of time for, uh, fishing and, um, you know, with every, and just spending time with everybody else. So. Yeah, because I'm the only one left. So everybody, everybody else is is gone. It's just basically right. me. Yep. So I'd say he's having a good time. I I really appreciate the reading and and I think no, absolutely, absolutely. No, well, you know, Jason, I've, I've been wanting you to, got a home here with me, brother. Yeah, I've been wanting to ask that for a few guests that we've had, but I just was compelled to ask Dean for some reason. I don't know. No, absolutely. That's <clears throat> no, yeah. it's a great question. We have a shell in the chat room that's asking, what is it? I can't quite read it. Let's see. Hold on. She says, does my grandmother have something to say to me or is she my spirit guide? 
Well, I feel it's interesting for Shell. It, it, um, it, it feels like twofold. It feels like, um, and it's kind of confusing what their question like. Does she have something to share with me or is she my spirit guide? She can be your spirit guide, Shell, and she can still have something to say to you. Um, but it, it's interesting. Is a very simple um, piece for you is saying, keep going. And um, even though it sounds very simple, but it's, it's what I'm understanding is very powerful as well. Because there's an aspect of your life that I'm hearing that you're feeling like giving up on or like, I don't know, you're giving up, you know, like if something's too hard or like, ah, the hell with this or whatever the case is. But she's sharing, keep going, push through this. This is like almost like one of those false walls, so to speak. Right. And so she's just encouraging you to push through and, and, uh, in, in this aspect of your life and keep going. So, um, but a lot of love, a lot of support, but she's kind of a no nonsense lady. Um, and really put you in your place if, it, if, <laughs> if she needs to, but, she um, does. but yeah, <laughs> but keep going. That's awesome. We want to remind everybody that Dean does this for veterans. Uh, he does readings for veterans families that have been, you know, um, caught up in the wars and stuff. And, and I really admire him for that. Absolutely. Yes. And I've watched a lot of his videos. Yes. Yes. And, thank you, Dean. Uh, give, uh, well, can you give some of these, you. can you give people some of the, um, like, um, where they can see some of these videos and, and contact yeah, you yeah. and stuff? Yeah. If, yeah. If, so if you go over to, uh, YouTube and you just look for the, uh, the military media, and um, just look there, and you'll find my page. And uh, you can subscribe, all that great stuff. And you can watch all the videos that I have online, whether it's, uh, you know, Sizzler Reels for old. Uh, actually, the one that everybody's probably watched a million times is uh, an old concept that they were going to do for a, a reality, uh, what they call a reality show. Every time I say that, I kind of cringe. <laughs> Um, I think of the Kardashians or something, um, but it never, but, but, uh, and nothing against them, but, um, you know, I just think, oh, you know, reality. Um, but it, it never made it to network. So I got, uh, to use the, the, the video that they used. Um, you know, and there's a whole bunch of others. There's some off the radar with, uh, I do every once in a while what I, what I, what I call off the radar series where I do, uh, Free readings for folks. You can go on my website if you want to put your name in the in the I guess the the pool. And at random, I'll go and I'll just pull somebody out of somebody's name and I'll get a hold of them. And basically, what we do is we give them a reading, um, and whether it's in person or by video, and I record it and then I post that. And the idea is to actually do it live. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it's just to kind of do it, um, like off the cuff or on the spur, right? It's not, you know, and I thought, well, that gives people an opportunity to get a free reading. Um, and then the other aspect you talked about, um, I don't have anything, I don't think any, with any gold star families per se, I, I've given them readings in the past. I've given, uh, you know, fellow veterans and pretty much everybody from, Oh wow! A whole different, diverse backgrounds of uh, jobs and you know diversities all over. Um, but obviously, I'm always going to be um, you know uh, kind of drawn to my you know the veteran uh, community. Obviously, being a veteran myself, um, and then we have family friends that um, are is a gold star family themselves and. She lost her husband in Iraq and, uh, you know, and in other aspects. But, you know, and, and whether you're a gold star mother or a gold star spouse or what, or maybe a gold star child, um, a lot of kids, you know, doing that is there's there's a lot of different things. But I want to share something that I started um, that I started doing with COVID um, when COVID started really last March. 
or with a big lockdown. And so what I did is I, I wanted to, and when I get the opportunity, I love doing a, what I call a give, operation give back and where I give back to the community in some way. And I thought, yeah, what can I do with Corona? And, you know, it's in the past I've helped with uh, make a wish. I've helped with, uh, you know, uh, homeless or, or, you know, gathering food or whatever. But I thought, God, if, if, if folks are still getting readings, um, I was like, why don't I start a get back program for every reading that is purchased? I will kind of get set aside a like reading. For example, if somebody orders a one hour reading with me, then I basically write down a list, one hour reading. And so I have a list of, of readings that I give away to people that are in the military, they're veterans, that are first responders, law enforcement, um, those kind of folks. And it, I call it my operation um, give back, right? Awesome. And um, so, yeah, it's been, uh, it's, uh, been something that's been pretty rewarding. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, thanks for doing that. And, uh, yeah, and so where it's uh, it's kind of fun because, um, like, especially like a lot of nurses, um, you know, if I have a, so for example, uh, I had a client a while back that she was a nurse in a hospital, and I said, you know what I'd really love to do is I'd love to send you a bunch of gift certificates to hand it amongst, out amongst your coworkers to, um, so you can share that with them and, and the gift of getting a reading if they so choose. And, uh, or whomever they would like to give that to it's it's theirs to do whatever. And, uh, so yeah, that's always fun to do. And, uh, so, but, um, so if there's somebody out there that is, um, is, you know, in the healthcare field, law enforcement, fire, first responder, military, um, and, would like to find out more about this operation give back just send me an email you can do it through my website you go to you know the military medium.com you can send me an email there or you can just go dean at dean mcmurray.com send me a direct email and saying hey i heard about this thing you know this operation give back and uh we can chat about it a little bit and uh we get you hooked up and uh get you set up with a free, free reading. Um, you know, and of course it's limited to, um, you know, somebody else purchasing. So they're kind of, they're kind of prepaying for your reading in a sense. Uh, uh, so, uh, they're, you know, by, by doing that. So it's, it's something that, uh, I don't always have the opportunity to give back. And I thought, you know, what's a way that I could do it by still doing what I do. And, uh, because I, I've, you know, um, before COVID, I was doing a quarterly um, um, Operation Give Back Gallery, and uh, where we're like raising money for nonprofits in the local area. And uh, every quarter, we pick a new nonprofit. So whether it's uh, you know, uh, like a big one nationally is uh, oh, like all the school lunch programs, right? Before the government funded it. Um, was they were hurting, right? Because there was a lot of kids that couldn't even eat because they couldn't afford meals. And, uh, you know, in, in, in our area, was, uh, it was the same thing. And I thought, you know, that would be a great a great one to uh, donate to. And uh, So, yeah, it was always fun to be able to do that. But, of course, COVID changed a lot of things because we stopped doing in-person events there for quite a while. And now we're just starting to get back into that. Um, but you know, the biggest thing I, uh, you guys asked also is social media. If you want to check me out on Instagram, Facebook, you can do so the military medium. Um, and then also, uh, Twitter. I'm not as active on that, but I'm out there. Um, you know, you can check all those out, but, um, and then of course, uh, yeah. So just look up, uh, the military medium. Um, and then also, uh, you know, some, there might be some stuff if the veterans out there, if you like the, the veteran niche of, as far as, um, talking about podcasts and different things, 
I run a little podcast out there too called the Red White News Show, and where we talk create a veteran uh, community uh, with the fire police and first responders and talk about all the do-gooders that are changing, you know, the world for the better in that community. And uh, so that's been a fun project as well. But what, what uh, was that? Fun little things. What was that podcast again? So it's called the uh, red, white and you show. And that is on, um, that is actually on YouTube only YouTube. Um, okay. so yeah, so if you if you go to YouTube, you'll find that, and um, so yeah, and I had a lot of different formats going over. Uh, what well, we've been going, we're going on season three, um, wow. and originally we started we started off on the radio, and then moved, um, you know, the FM morning show moved over to podcast, and then we moved over to uh, YouTube. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so funny little things going on, but um, yeah, you're a busy man. Well, you know, I, I try to stay out of trouble. Um, <laughs> and, my, and my wife would probably say, "Probably not busy enough," but uh, you know, hey, I'm glad you took the time out uh, to join us tonight. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and take another quick break because it's not over. It sounded like it was going to be over. Because he kept giving his information now, now, but no, it's not over yet. We got like 25 <laughs> more minutes. So we're going to take a quick break and we have two more questions, uh, that, that, that people want to ask from the chat room, if that's okay. Uh, yeah, after the break. Okay. All righty. Well, we're, we'll go to a quick break and we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to You're listening You're listening You're listening Project Corona Hey everybody This is Matt Sieber from East Tennessee Bigfoot.org You're listening to David and Jason at Project Dark Corona Radio Have you ever thought of using alternative health products, dried herbs, edibles? If so, check out Willow Branch Botanicals. They have a nice selection of nature's products straight from their farm to your family. Items such as essential oils, herbs, hand sanitizers, beeswax, also edibles such as their Tennessee wildflower honey. So check out Willow Branch Botanicals at www.willowbranchbotanicals.com. You can also find them on Facebook at Willow Branch Botanicals. Remember, where nature's products are done right. Thanks for listening to Project Dark Corona. You can find us on Facebook at Project Dark Corona Podcast. All of our shows are posted in the events section. You can also find us on Twitter at Project Dark Coro. We have a webpage at projectdarkcorona.org. You can sign up and become a member. You can post blogs and listen to past shows. So remember and listen to Project Dark Corona Podcast. Welcome and thanks for listening to Project Dark Corona on Podbean. If you like our show and would like to support it you can by becoming a patron just click on the box that says become a patron and sign up we have different options that you can choose from to support us uh, some of the perks becoming a patron include bonus content free gifts and the feeling of being part of the show so thanks and continue listening to project dark corona
Hey, this is Jeff Reagan with the band Catalyst. You're listening to Project Dark Corona. All right, we're back. So um, I want to thank um, Catalyst East Tennessee for the first oh, song yeah. that we listened to tonight. And I also want to thank Mississippi Bones for this song that we listen to right now. Um, thank them for allowing us to use their music. And, uh, and we definitely appreciate it. So, um, yeah, you can go to Band Lab and download yes. Catalyst East Tennessee and uh, and Mississippi, Mississippi Bones, Bones. Yes. on 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 uh, Band Lab Band Lab dot com. Yep, a lot of awesome songs. We love book. that yes. music, and yeah. and there's a heck of a lot more than what we played tonight for sure. Mm-hmm. So uh, we we want to uh, uh, thank both of these for allowing us to uh, play their music. Oh yeah, we also want to thank Mr. Dean McMurray, absolutely, for coming on the show tonight. I mean, this is an awesome guest. This is, and we've got a couple, and we've got, I know two, but I've got a question, and there's oh, another question too. We got so. three. So there's four questions. So we 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 will get through the two hours tonight, Dean. Easily, if that's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm all about it. I'm maybe, all about it. Maybe a little yeah. overtime. And, I don't know. and remember, you have to come back to Project Dark oh, Corona at some yes. point in time. Hey, I love it, guys. I'd love it. <laughs> well, you know, once you come on, you're family. So you know, it's just it's well, all about coming go. back. <laughs> I love guess uh, it, love it. here yeah. in the south, you know. Yeah, we're just some good old boys. Well, I shouldn't say good old boys. We're some good guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That uh, love everything. Yeah, and every everything paranormal. You know. Well, if we had a car like right. a General Lee, we might be jumping stuff. I mean, we probably we could be good. Yeah. Old yeah. Boys. You know, we're right. already wrecking Harley, so <laughs> well, might as well jump. That was, that was that was me about a month and a well, a little over a month and a half ago. Yeah, yeah. wrecking your Harley. Yeah, oh, I, I wrecked my Harley and and oh, uh, man. broke six ribs and cracked two vertebrae. So yeah, Ooh. I'm barely getting back to work again. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> well, I guess I'll start with the first yes. question. And uh, this is from Sweetness. She was wondering, is her mom trying to say anything to her? And and who's who's asking the question? I'm sorry. Sweetness. Oh, sweetness. And is her mom trying to say anything to her? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's her. That's her question. Her mom. Well, had this this is the same. I think this is the same one that um, sweetness is the same one that uh, that that came in earlier and, and asking about the you know yes. the message or whatever. Yeah, with the sounds, about, uh, the noise. Yeah, yeah. don't. Yeah, or well, right. But then also about a, a message and saying where I kept on hearing, you know, don't quit or don't stop, whatever the can't remember exactly how it freezes. Um, so I think I already answered that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was Shell. Yeah. Or that Shell. Was Shell earlier. Oh, that was Shell earlier. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was oh, about that her was... grandmother. Yeah. Oh, that was Shell. I'm sorry. Yes. This was a sweetness. Yes. Okay. 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 
So sweetness is asking did her did her mom or is their mom sharing anything for her? Well, I mean, for sweetness other than I mean talking about, you know, just a lot of love, but the the aspect of um, you know, just making sure I keep on feeling like um, she keeps on gathering everybody up. And so what I'm feeling is that and what I keep on hearing from her, it's more about, you know, getting, bringing family together. So I don't know if there's a family rift going on or what's going on for that, but, um, you know, it's just about their togetherness is what she keeps on talking about. But the other aspect of just being so very proud of her. So. Okay. Wow. That's fantastic. Thanks. <laughs> and then that we is, got, uh, that's really yeah. weird. That's awesome. So maybe the family or, you know, they might need to get over themselves and get together <laughs> is what you're saying. You know, let's... Well, well, maybe perhaps, you know, it could be a lot of stuff going on. There's, there's always stuff going on in families. Right. And right. so sometimes, yeah, yeah. you know, but that's what I was showing. It's like scooping everybody up together. Um, and just, you know, bringing everybody in together. So I don't know if there's been maybe since her passing or what, but the thing is, is you know, like togetherness, I think was the word that I brought and okay. that I kept okay. in So, yeah. So maybe it's time to uh, have a family gathering. So, okay. okay. You know, have a, have a good old cookout. So yeah, have a cookout. That sounds like a good you idea. You know what yeah. we did, uh, every weekend uh, up until I guess, my great grandmother went into a nursing home. We had a gathering every Saturday for lunch huh? and they would cook. They would cook wow. all kinds of good food. And it was every Saturday when I was growing up. And Doesn't it, that brings back a lot of great memories. It was, I mean, great. you know, I mean, I would, I would sit in the living room watching, um, Smoky Mountain wrestling while yeah. the the pinto beans and meatloaf and everything was cooking. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was great. <laughs> playing cards or Love something, it. probably. I don't know. Was that what was no it was no too? playing cards? No it playing was cards. either outside or inside, outside uh, or inside. watching wrestling. Wrestling. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, oh, great. That's awesome. We also got another question uh, from. CKV, uh, wanting to know what are my guides saying about me and are they related to him? Oh, sure. Well, are you sure? Are you sure that he wants to know? No, I'm just <laughs> um, <laughs> No, I'm messing around. Um, no, you know, the biggest thing is that there is pretty profound um, because really talking about the you know, the message that this guy is sharing for him is he's talking about the opportunities coming up this summer for him. It's going to be what I would call, I would put in the ballpark of it changing in a good way. It's like one of those big pivotal life moments. And it's like the holy crap that is just, you know, knock your socks out type energy. Um, it doesn't feel at least, uh, the guy that I'm connecting to does not feel like um, their family. However, the aspect of, um, you know, it's not saying that he doesn't have family that are guides. But um, so, but I think that there's a, there's a deeper aspect of, you know, where he's starting to connect or has been maybe for the last year. But there's a bigger, there's a bigger piece there. Um, and then the, the other thing is, is almost like, you know, what I would say is, uh, you know, it's time to figure out what you're doing, too. It's almost like, uh, I would say, almost like paranormal investigation or something. But you need to figure out what you're doing in that. Um, I keep on hearing something about, it's like back and forth and like, is it serious or isn't? So it's like. That almost like making a decision. So understand that, and that could be part of the big pivotal piece. But there is something big. It's it's not just a small decision. This is a. So they keep on talking about some really fun stuff coming up for you this summer. That's pretty nice. It's nice to know something 
Fun's coming up. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, I like yeah, that. Right? Yeah, right? I like that. Yeah. Um, I do have one thing, and, and it's it's not for me, um, but it's for someone in my family. And, um, and, uh, I love this guy with all my heart and, um, his name is, is David, same as my name. And, uh, I'm just wondering if you get anything about him because, um, he's in a place that's not where he should be. Literally, yeah. literally, not right. where he should be, and right. uh, and if you if you get anything that um that says that you know he's going to get some reprieve or or anything anytime soon, um, I don't know. It's, it's, and now David's still with us, right? Yes, he's not deceased. He's not absolutely, over him, absolutely, so. yes. I just want to, I just want to understand correctly. Now, you know, uh, so you're talking about this, of course. You know, unfortunately, I wish, I really like to try to stay optimistic, you know, like to try to stay positive if I can. But it's interesting, Dave, because you talk about some heavy energy. Like, when I connect to that, like, it's, like, when you say that he is not in a place, it is, like, heavy. Like, the energy is is pretty dense. And I don't feel any change at least um, in the next, what I would say, four to six months. Now, I will share this. The energy, hopefully, is always shifting. And we all have the ability of free will. So we can do and make decisions every moment of every day. Mm -hmm. But obviously, we all know that we have to pay the consequences of what we do or don't do. Um, you know, especially if they're illegal, immoral, and just. And, but I don't know, whatever he's dealing with is some heavy stuff. And I think the biggest thing where it can help for him is letting, just letting him know that other folks are there supporting him, loving him. Um, because as much as I want their loved ones to change their actions and or behaviors, um, it's not going to happen unless they choose to do it. So you can't, you know, you can't make somebody do something that they don't essentially want to do at some level, you know? Um, so does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I, I really wish I was picking up something different, but I, I don't. And I'm not going to sit here and, you know, blow smoke up up for you, you know, and, and tell you something that is not feeling. Um, so, but, um, you know, I hope it shifts for him, though. It's not saying that I can't. But, um, and that's where I'll take to try to stay out for a minute. It can change, but I, I don't feel it changing. I don't. It, it's pretty solid in a sense, and it would take a lot to shift. So. Well, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, you bet. You bet. Yeah. I you mean, bet. how often do you meet an honest medium? I mean, he he's pretty honest. I've I've only <laughs> I've only ever went to one myself. And uh, so what she what, she she um she filled my head full of all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I was young. I mean, I was young and dumb at the time, so I believed everything. So yeah. Well, we do but, have one other medium that's pretty honest. We do. Yeah, yeah. Lori. Lori's honest too. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Lori Hines is honest, and I do believe from listening to Dean that that he is honest as they come. Yeah, uh, he's not going to tell you something that he don't feel. Which is good. Yes, very, right. very good. Yeah, I, I'm not. I, I yeah, I'm not. It. That's a hard. That that that's a hard part. Is you know, I want to be. You know, I, I would like to tell you things that you would like to hear, but unfortunately, that's not the way it works. And so, as much as I'd like to do that, I'm certainly not going to be the person saying, you know, you know, if it's if it's not something somebody, you know, it's like I'm sorry, this is probably not what you want to hear. 
However, here's what I get. And, um, you know, can go both ways, but. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Dean, um, I guess I got a question for you. Since everybody else has asked a question, I might as well. Yeah. Five Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. I won't be the oddball. I'll ask him a question and uh, take advantage of uh, him being on here with us. We still got to give away some stuff. Well, yeah. We do. We will. We will. If you we let got, me ask my question, we got we a little more that. than five minutes then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dean. Um, yes, is sir. Is there any of my loved ones um, that might be trying to get a hold of me? Can you? Yes, sir. Out? You have a. Yes, sir. You have a male step forward on the father's side of the family. Understand that he would have passed. Feels to me like in his eighties. He tells me that he passed from cancer. And one of the things I keep on getting, he keeps on spitting on the ground. So I understand that he was a big, uh, I would say it's not snuff, but more chewing tobacco, right? Because it keeps on, you know, chewing on. He has like a big old pouch on the side of his face. Um, and uh, he really liked the sweets. Like there is interesting, like a, I would call it like a sticky candy or a, I'm not familiar with it. But it's almost like a homemade maybe toffee or something. Okay. Um, but yeah. I, I never, I, <laughs> he's yeah. been reading you all was, night. I know. And, and it, and it, and it's almost like, um, what I would say, it's almost like homemade black licorice, you know, taffy or, or something, but, um, but it's like homemade, right? Yeah. So, but the biggest thing, but the biggest thing is, is this, is that really letting you know is that, you know, don't go, it, this sounds kind of interesting, but. He says, don't go swimming where you ain't supposed to go swimming. And what he's talking about is this, is that, um, you know, a lot of times when people go swimming in areas where it's too deep, um, they can tend to get over their head. And he's talking more about, I don't know if you're in a situation about investing or putting a lot of maybe financial assets into something. But basically, in a, in a roundabout way, he's talking about don't get in over your head. He's like, don't go swimming where you ain't supposed to go swimming. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, so basically don't get in over your head. Be careful what you're doing. Maybe, you know, don't don't get out there where you're, you know, if your strong suit isn't swimming long distance or maybe in, in the, or, or financial matters or whatever the case is, then. You know, maybe you got to put on those damn water wings, right? Maybe you got to wear the light vest. I don't know. But, uh, but again, you know, he goes back to don't be going somewhere. You ain't supposed to go swimming. So kind of interesting, but, um, yeah. you know, kind of a cantankerous old, old gentleman, but, um, and loving still the same. Um, and, uh, you know, just a lot of love hanging around. I do feel a lot of big female energies sitting around as well. And then uh, somebody that is a really great yodeler, like they're like I would say yodeler, just a great singer. Like I don't feel like come from the mother's side of family, but it's interesting. Like I keep on hearing mm-hmm. singing all around you, but interesting. That makes sense to you. Well, yeah, the man was probably someone that I wasn't really close to because uh, of how he acted and how he was in life, and that was my father. Uh, ah. yeah and um because of the things that he did in his life um how he treated my mother whenever they were married and um you know he did try to make amends with me whenever he got older and everything and uh, uh he might have had cancer i know he had a lot of problems with him but he was uh, he didn't really want to tell me about him uh, sure sure you know but he did um well you know he did like uh he did have licorice and then he did like the uh peanut butter brittle and it was always <laughs> homemade and stuff and uh did he, sure did yep, he yep. chew backer yes he chewed back oh yeah he had it you know in his you know, front I, pocket or back pocket really weird and i don't chew back i hated that stuff i didn't want it around and, um, you know, it was, you know, as like I said, we weren't really close, but he was my dad 
And um, sure. even though he did treat my mom bad, she always said, hey, he is your dad. Try to have a relationship with him. But basically, right. uh, he did have enough humility to say, hey, be a better father than I was. And, uh, mm-hmm. and I, mm-hmm. I try my best, but I still make mistakes. Everybody and, does. Yeah. Everybody and, does. Yeah. yeah. Everybody does. And there are a lot of financial things that I – me and my sister are having to take care of and, uh, and sure, stuff. Sure. So, I mean, there are things that we're doing and trying to do the right thing and everything. Sure. And, uh, as far as the yodeler, that could probably be my, my mama. That would be my grandmother. And, uh, she always oh, okay. sang and, uh, we're, we're from the Appalachian area, you know, <laughs> at Smoky mountains and everything. And sure. so, uh, okay. Yodeling was definitely something that they did in the thirties and forties and stuff. Whenever she was in her younger days and everything. And whenever um, me and my mom and her would go on trips to Cades Cove and places like that, they would always sing church songs and everything and, and everything and always made stuff special to be with them. So that's awesome. That's awesome. I appreciate you well, cool. uh, <laughs> telling me that, and it was uh, yeah, absolutely, and, and I'm glad you can validate. So that's that's me. Yeah. All right. That was great. Yeah, just right over the two hour limit, so that's it's fantastic. almost perfect. We're giving away some stuff now. Late, yeah. uh, <laughs> stay on the line, Dean. So because uh, uh, yes, sir, I, I'm, I'm right here. <laughs> I need you to to uh, what? to tell people what. You are giving away for the grand prize. Oh, but sure. The f- and first how, and prize, how they could get a hold of you and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think sure. you sent it to us. Did you send it to us? Well, do you do you want, do you want me to? Well, we can work out details. Okay, too. we'll work out. I, I mean, whether I send it to you or send it to them direct is regardless. I don't care. Um, but we can work out details. But uh, they're winning it regardless, though. So. Absolutely. Okay, so go. uh we we go by the chat room uh action. Mm. And I want to I want to go ahead and give away one of the mugs. The uh Project Dark Corona I believe mug with uh it's going to have a, a a special prize inside of it when you when you receive it. So uh, I want to go ahead and give that away to Miranda. All right. You, did you hear that, Miranda? Miranda, you just want a mug. <laughs> and a, a glass 32-ounce mug. Uh, I don't know how old you are, but usually we put beer in it. Uh, <laughs> but uh your drink of choice your drink of choice oh, and it, it it is a authentic project dark corona podcast mug and i'm gonna put my email up in the chat room so everybody can get a hold of me and give me the information and stuff yes so oh can yeah send it to you all right the next prize is another mug what Woo! we're giving away three mugs we only got three mugs to give away plus whatever we put inside of them <laughs> and no adult beverages i i whatever uh, dean, you put inside of them dean do you do you uh uh drink out of a mug uh yes sir all right dean Mc- McMurray wins a mug <laughs> with a special Project Dark Corona sweet, uh, sweet. Look at that. prize in the middle of it. You, you know, you, you receive was, it. Look at that. Yeah, you were so active during the show. I huh? know. I mean, he was like he was the guest. <laughs> you know. That's I mean, what... you guys hardly even picked on me too. I mean, I had a really stand out. I mean, yeah, you'll have to send Lee your address so he can we can get it to you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, and now, sure. Uh, Dean, go ahead and tell uh, everybody what they're going to win for the. Oh, no, I got one more mug. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, I got one more you mug to get rid of, Jason. Hold on. You got, I got one more mug. One more mug to get rid of. Hold on just a minute. <laughs> Let's see mug. here. Not get rid of. To yeah. to give away. To give away. Prize. Yes. Yeah. We got another well, mug to get to give away. <laughs> Not just get rid of. 
Not well, like we got a hundred of them sitting he, around. He's calculating. I mean, Victoria, she's been it. She entered the live studio twenty times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say Victoria, you got a mug, <laughs> and and you have a special gift inside the mug that's coming to you. There you and go. Just send Lee your address, and we'll get it right to you. <laughs> that's three mugs. Three mugs. Now three we mugs. got one more. Okay, we got Dean, we got Victoria, and we got Vic- Victoria. No, Miranda. No, Miranda. Miranda. Miranda, Victoria, Victoria and, and Dean. Dean. Yes. Okay, that's the mugs. That's the mugs. Now we got one now, more to give. Now, Dean, them. you can go ahead and, and, and give us your spill on your prize. The grand so, prize. So with the, yeah, with the grand prize, guys, what I'm, what I'm going to do is, uh, is offer a next certificate to somebody that you guys draw um, for a that is that will prepare for a thirty minute screening by phone or by Zoom, and typically I just want to give everybody kind of a kind of a, an idea. So these these readings typically go for a couple hundred bucks. So you know whoever's getting it is uh, getting a nice little little chunk, but. Um, so, yeah, and it doesn't expire, but uh, you get a nice little um, fancy-looking gift certificate. Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. That's, All right. That's fantastic. Let me tally up the votes here. Tally them up. I don't know who it is. Wait, wait, wait. Where's the drum roll? Drum roll. Well, that wasn't the drum roll. That was the spooky roll. Drum <laughs> roll's on there. Oh, hold on. Let me get the drum roll You got going. the drum roll on yours. I've got, I've got the spooky one on mine. Okay. <laughs> For the grand prize for the Dean McMurray, the military medium gift of a 30-minute reading goes to Sweetness. (laughs) Okay. Awesome. Sweetness. So, um... I guess send the stuff to me. <laughs> yeah, just uh, send all your information to Mr. Lee Price. Uh, I'm sure. Dean, you got his email, right? Yeah. Yes, I just, sir. Yeah. yeah, I Get missed your email. I was out late earlier. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get you your mug. Uh, just send us your address, and we'll get yeah, you your mug. And then and, we'll, uh, and, then we'll make sure sweetness gets this uh, gift certificate. We'll uh, get that in the mail and... Uh, We'll we'll mail that on out. Okay, I'll okay. send you the information and everything, and then uh, whenever they man, they I tell you in. what, it's been awesome having you on the show. Uh, I loved it. Well, I really appreciate. Uh, and we do you know, want you to come back. Yeah, I would love to come back, guys. I really had it. Truly, honestly, uh, I mean it when I say that I really had fun, and and it was fun. Uh, you know, just uh, visiting with you guys and, and sharing the story and uh, just uh, really had a blast just kind of laughing and joking, but uh, getting serious too. Well, yeah, we try not to make it too uh, businessy. We like to just chill out and have a good time right. and, and talk. Right, right. Talk, uh, Absolutely. whatever. Right, right, yeah. That's no, nice. I was uh, re- really had a tremendous time, so thank you. Yeah, thanks. Cause uh, everything you do for the military and uh, absolutely with the family members that yes. uh, that were in the military that have passed and everything, and so sure, sure, that's awesome. And and I want to before we end this, I want to uh, let everybody know that if you didn't get any, uh, you know, you forgot to get your pen out and your paper or whatever, and you didn't get you know, all the addresses on uh, the URLs or anything else. We have them all on our Facebook page. Yep. Um, you go to our events page, you go to the past and it shows everything, not only what's coming up, you know, if you go to, to the, to what's going on now, but if you go to our past and it shows everybody that's been on before and this will still be on there um, all, all of, uh, the URL addresses, everything like that. Um, we make sure that it's, it's on there so you could get a hold of Dean. Are you still working on your book or is it finished? 
I'm still working on that okay. thing. <laughs> when 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 you get it done, I mean, we need oh, to we need please. to do an episode on on your book because absolutely, and we would we would love to have a book. Absolutely, I mean, I we, uh, you know, that's one of those things that it's a love hate relationship. Like, <laughs> I would love to have a book done, but it's like the writing piece. I don't know. Like, I, I think me and David understand. know what you mean. We understand. We're working on a book ourselves, and it's <laughs> well, not too easy. Well, I think their problem is they're working on like five or six books at a time. We Seems are. Like it. We Seems are. Like it. We're working on at least at least three books yeah, at the same three time. At least. <laughs> So it. it makes it hard. It. <laughs> it does. Uh, <clears throat> well, we want to say we uh, thank you very much uh, for coming on the show, and uh, and we definitely appreciate it, and and hope that you would think about coming back in in the future I, and talking to us. I, I, I'd be honored to. I'd be honored to come back on the show and um, chat with you guys and catch up, see what's going on, and all yeah. that great stuff. I want to hear David say, "This guy's actually been on coast to coast." <laughs> well, <laughs> for a week, I <laughs> heard coast to coast, coast to coast. I, this guy's been on, I listened to week. the episode last night, coast to coast. He was on there. I was like, "Oh, yeah." Well, <laughs> well, you're gonna have to get used to that because half of our guests coming up. I've been on coast, coast to coast. coast. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, there you it's go. yeah, it's funny, but you know, we um, love we. I loved uh, uh, the old coast to coast with um, Art Bell. Art Bell, Art Bell yeah. yes, Art Bell. He yeah. was my favorite. He was I mean, the band. Well, um, but you know, Art's passed. So um, I mean, the you know, only the, way George to talk Norrie, to him, he gets a little. Yeah. He does a lot of other stuff, but. Art Bell done paranormal just about only. Yeah. Well, and if he didn't like, like a person, it. he would yeah. like go to open lines quick. He'd just like mm-hmm. cut him off. Open lines. Open lines. Yeah. We're going to open lines now. Um, yeah. He was hilarious, but um, but you know, I'm, you know, I I I enjoy the fact that you know we're getting, uh, we're able to to uh, get guests. Uh, like you, uh, Dean, uh, to come on and, uh, and to share your story with us and, and not only to us, but, you know, to, to all the people that's going to listen to this, not only tonight, but, but, you know, in the future. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that, that it's, it's fantastic. And, uh, I want to thank you again for, for coming on, uh, not only for me, but Jason and, and Lee and all of us here um, at Project Dark Corona, we want to thank you very much for coming on. And and um, and I really do hope, you know, that in the future uh, you will consider coming back on with us and and uh, yeah. and sharing sharing some more with us and stuff. And uh, and and I, I I want to sincerely say that I appreciate you. Thank you. Oh well, thank you. That means a lot. And absolutely, I'd be. As I shared earlier, I'd be honored to come back on, and uh, we can uh, certainly look at doing that down the road. So, yeah. absolutely, thank thank you very much, Dean, and and you have a good night, and uh, and a good uh, weekend. Absolutely, and and I just want to share, guys, before we go, thank you for what you guys do. Thank you for for using your platform to you know share um, different points of view and 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 uh, different stories out there and to and help enlighten and share and, and, and heal uh, people that are in need. And uh, so I just wanted to say thank you for continuing doing your, your podcast because I know how difficult it can be at times. So uh, just thank you for what you do. Absolutely. Thank we. You know what? Um, I definitely appreciate that. I know Jason and stuff appreciates that. Oh, and, yeah. and, um, you know, from an early age, this was something that, like I shared earlier, that hit me, and and that's kind of what spurred me on through through all my years of of uh, of wanting to do this and stuff. Before he gets off the air, I want to tell him the story how I got involved. Oh, oh goodness! Here oh, we go. Go ahead. I mean, ahead. we 
We Go got ahead. as much time as we need. Well, right? well, but, but we don't, we don't want to take all of his. I don't want to take all your time. Yes. But here's the <laughs> story that I got involved with David. Time. We were working together, <laughs> and uh, I'll make it short. Okay. David had a haunted house. Yes, I used to okay. have a haunted house. Okay. <laughs> David had a haunted house. I said, "Yeah, right." So, come on over, Jason. Investigate it with me. So I went over. <laughs> uh, we done a few uh, readings and and uh, you know with all these. It, we did some EVP work. EVPs, and uh, I'm sitting in his chair, and I'm like, uh, the 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 meter's going crazy. The EMF meter. When I'm sitting in his chair, when I put it to my knee, and I know I do not do not have metal in my knee. <laughs> and that thing started going off and crazy and crazy, and I just said, it was recording the whole time, EVPs, and I said, are you sitting on my lap? And all of a sudden, you hear this voice go, yes. Yeah. I'm like, David, I got to go. <laughs> He left. He left. I got. I, I'll be back, but I got to go right now. He didn't go to come back to my house for two weeks. Two weeks later, <laughs> I come back and said, "Okay, let's try this again." And but, then we got a male's voice. The yeah, next time. then we got a male's voice, and and I've been a believer ever since because that little girl was sitting on my knee. I don't care what you say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When when David said, now, okay. was it, "Now was it was was it a little girl or was it a woman or?" It was a little girl. So. Um, a little bit of, of information. Like, so I, like I said, I can, I can usually see them pretty well. And one night I was sitting, it was Easter night. I was sitting in my chair and I happened to look down the hallway of my house and I saw this little girl in a big Easter dress walk out of a bedroom and look at me. And I knew at that point, because I, I had known before um, you know, some stuff had happened at the house and, and, and stuff. And I had played around with some, some spirit activity and, and stuff. And, sure. and, uh, and so I knew that it was a, a playful spirit of some sort, but when I saw the little girl, I mean, I saw her, um, I mean, as well as I'm looking at Jason or Lee right here across from me, um, sure. I knew that this was this was what was going on at the house. And so I told Jason that there's a little girl at the house. And, and so when we caught this little girl sitting, he, he sat in my chair at my house and, and it was over his knee. And so you'd go about two or three foot over his knee and it would stop or over to one side or the other, it would stop. But when it would come yeah. over his his knee, it would be there, and yeah. and uh, and when he asked the question, "Are you sitting on my lap?" You hear like it's kind of like a little girl's voice going, "Yes," you know. Um, it was just confirmation for me for what I had already seen myself, and right, right. And, and then two weeks later when I saw him or when J- Jason decided to actually come back to my house. Cause he, he literally left after we, uh, after swear. we replayed the uh, audio, Jason was like, I got to go home. Bye. <laughs> and he was gone. He was gone that second. Cause I told him, I was like, look, my house is haunted. And he was like, whatever. That was our first <laughs> website. Uh, yeah. My house is haunted.com. That's what pro- started project. Dark Corona was my house is haunted.com. And, um, and so, so, uh, he come back about two weeks later and we continued to, uh, to look at the house and we got a male's voice and he directly answered a few questions that we asked even. And so, you know, here we had correlation to not only a little girl, but a, a male's voice too. And we also seen the little girl in a photo that was taken yes. of his stepson. Yes. She was upside down. Yes. I'm telling like she you. She was up, hanging from the ceiling. Hanging from a door. Yeah. Doorway upside down beside her his stepson. Yeah. And her face was all blurred. You couldn't yeah. you couldn't make out her face, but you could see the, the You could see that it was a human sure. face. Yes, it was crazy. Yeah. I said, Man, I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> so that is funny i don't know i've been living with this stuff you know most of my life and for me it's just normal 
you know, so yeah. it's, it's crazy. I don't know. You would, you would understand more than I, more than anybody else. I guess. I just thought we'd share right, that with right, you yeah. how it got started. No, that's an awesome story. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love so, it. That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dean, we appreciate you coming. Like we said before well, and hope you come back. Absolutely guys. Thanks for having me. I really do appreciate it. That was, it was really fun. It really was. And, uh, you guys are great hosts and, uh, you know, we as well. Thank you so much. And, uh, but, yeah, uh, you know, I'm the ad. And, hey, <laughs> and, the ad and Lee. <laughs> so, but, uh, so, but yeah, no, thanks again. I do appreciate it. Thank you. And, uh, and you have a good night and a good weekend. And, uh, hopefully we'll be talking to you sometime in the not too distant future when he finishes his books oh, most yes. definitely yes one hundred percent or or, no, or before, sooner or b- before or before if you yes. do or yes. before or, or if he have a has a premonition of uh world destruction or anything or, or Any, david dying or david dying in the next oh. you know no we don't want to hear about that no. Oh, nobody's, uh, Cause, no, cause, no, you, know, no, you can't change. I it, had so a near death experience not too long ago. No I, negativity. I wrecked, I, I wrecked my motorcycle and actually uh, broke six ribs and cracked two vertebrae. But, but, yeah, but you, you didn't hit nothing. You didn't I hit am. nothing. You I just, am. you just slid over. Yeah, so five, 10 miles an hour that uh, happened yeah. to you. Imagine it if he's going 75. I know. I was lucky. I was lucky. Uh, All right. All right. We'll let you off, Dean. We're sorry. Thank you, Dean. We're keeping you on here as we're just talking. I'm sorry. And uh, and thanks to all your listeners, too. Thanks for the great questions out there. And and, uh, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. You're awesome. Awesome. You're you're the man. And uh, we appreciate you for coming on. You bet. Take care, guys. Have a great, uh, great weekend. And we'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Bye. Yeah, that was the military medium, Dean McMurray. That was that was awesome. That was that was a great show. It is. Still is a great show. Where are you going? Well, you can uh find Dean McMurray on YouTube and Facebook. Like I said, just look up the military medium and uh, on YouTube you can watch some of his videos where he's helped people out and everything and the book that he uh, suggested, if any of y'all think that perhaps you have psychic ability, is Infinite Quest, Develop Your Psychic Intuition to Take Charge of Your Life, and that's written by John Edward. John Edward? Yeah, John Edward. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Is I it? don't know if it was the one that had the TV show. I think that is John Edwards. Oh, okay. So it's a different one. And uh, next week, we're going to have Morgan Daimler, who's going to talk to us about fairies, Irish folklore, and paganism. Fairies. Yeah, the wee folk. Yeah, you know, I, <laughs> I just seen a news news thing about fairies. Uh, somebody in England or somewhere mm-hmm. took a picture. Oh, goodness. Of fairies and has a real picture of fairies. Little... Well, Right. Little, yeah, fairies. that's that's where that's where it's prevalent over there in the United Kingdom. That's uh, that's where it's really into it there. And uh, Morgan, uh, I'm probably wrong on the count, but last I saw, she's had 48 books published. 48. Yeah, she is a prolific published author, and uh, she she is she talks about all kinds of things. And I told David. He'd probably be interested in some of her books since he's got that tattoo of, uh, what's that, Odin's... Uh, Odin's Raven. Odin's Raven. And, and this and right here is Thor's Hammer. Thor's Hammer. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. And she's got books on both Odin right. and Thor. Right. So, and I I'm mean... A, I'm a follower of, of both, so... Yeah. So. Hey. <laughs> and... Uh, we'll take it. <laughs> and she's, she's also a witch, so she'll talk to us about that. That's the pagan part. <laughs> don't hear don't don't pay I, attention to the man behind the behind okay. the curtain just hear just hearing <laughs> things yeah like i said i was talking about morgan Dahmer. they'll be talking about the 
fairies, Irish folklore, and paganism with us next Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern to hear us live. Download the Podbean app and uh, follow Project Dark Corona so you can get us every live show. Yep. Now, now you can also listen to Project Dark Corona on your favorite listening platform at any time or on Podbean, whichever right. way you prefer. Absolutely. Yeah, we're on Spotify and you know iTunes, iTunes and Google and anywhere else you want to listen to us. Uh, you could listen to us there. But if you want to listen to us live, we're on Podbean. That's where you have to listen to us live. So go to Podbean. Like uh, Lee said, download the Podbean app. Look up Project Dark Corona. And go ahead and follow us. And every time we do a live show, it'll show you that we're live. Um, but you know what? To even be any better, go ahead and follow us on our Facebook page. Go on to our, what? what is it? Our Facebook page is what Everything is Paranormal, Bigfoot, <laughs> UFOs, Aliens, and Ghosts. Or you can go to the group page, Project Dark, Dark. Corona. Yep. Podcast. And yep. then that way you can share uh, any spooky videos that maybe you've captured, right. any EVPs that you've gotten. Right. Yeah. We, uh, we'll, yep. we'll let you post all that That's stuff. That's right. Yeah. And and then you go to our events. Yeah. Our events page. And, and once you, you go to the events page, all you have to do is look at all the guests we have, like the awesome guests we had tonight, like Dean McMurray. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Oh, yeah, Dean McMurray. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, and, you know, go ahead and hit like and. Yeah, that you want to go. That to you want to go to it. Yeah. And and it'll it'll actually pop up and tell you, hey, the event is about to happen. So you don't miss it. And so, you know, go ahead and do that. I mean, we've got people you, all the way up to win. Well, you told me to stop in July because so, we might. <laughs> and we do just some added stuff. one more, right? Well, yeah, we just sort added of. another one. It, it won't be up Cause, there till, cause till a little bit. This little bit. guy is like, yeah. wow. I mean, like, you just gotta, you just gotta read it, man. It's yeah. it's fantastic. But like I said, go to the events tab. Look at all the people that we've got. You're going to be fascinated with all this, and not only with the people that are coming up. But people like tonight, D. McMurray, um, look at all of our past shows. Go visit these guys and go to projectdarkcorona.org. Look at all of our past shows and and visit all of our past shows that you find fascinating. And I'm telling you, it you won't be you will not be at all. As far as I'm concerned, anyway. Yeah. This is my opinion. Yeah. But you won't be, um, you know. Who do you work sorry for? About it. Um, Himself. Myself. Yeah. Uh, what company do you represent? Project Dark Corona. Oh. <laughs> a politician. Hmm. Uh, a politician <laughs> in the house. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I tell you, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean they're they're just so many. It's fantastic. Guests. It's yeah. fantastic. That's, it really uh, is. And and Jason and I, yes, Jason and I have to thank Mr. Lee. Lee is a very important part of the show. He is. He, he comes every week. He he talks to the guest. He books the guest. He, he talks to us, the guest. He helps us get these awesome guests that we get. I mean. And we what have can to we thank, do without Lee Price? Well, we have to thank Lee for for his his definite contribution to the show. But he did not answer my phone call when I called him. He was doing groceries. Well, I mean, <laughs> but you got to do groceries, Jeff. Now, Jason, no, that's no, how no. I'm a weird person. I don't have my phone on me twenty four seven. You and me both. <laughs> um, I don't either, really, but. But you do. Uh, I miss a lot of phone calls. I know, because <laughs> half of them are mine. But Lee is the best, and we love him, and we want to thank him for his, I, his service sure to Project Dark that. Corona. Yeah. yeah, he is David, Jason, and Lee of Project Dark Corona. <laughs> yeah, we got we got it. 
We got to put Lee in there. Yeah, I sure do appreciate that. So, thank you. But um, but yeah. So everybody that won tonight. Oh yeah. Make sure Lee Miranda Sweetness and Mister Dean McMurray got a mug. Yeah. Woo, woo. Dean already sent me his address. He, Look at I've that. Got, he got drinks. He drinks out of a mug. I already like this guy. I yeah. do. Yeah, he's the man. I can't wait to talk to him again. So, um, so <laughs> we'll send everybody a mug, and uh, no, not everybody. Everybody that won. Everybody now that, that won. was that was because we got three hundred followers on Podbean. Absolutely, yes. thank you everybody and, for yeah, that. And when we get five hundred, we'll give away five things. Yes, we will. So everybody, tell your friends. Yeah, I tell you what. This is what I do, and I suggest. Everybody do what Lee does, right? Mm-hmm. I grab my kids' phones, um, their boyfriend's phones or their girlfriend's phones. That's right. And I just grab it. I say, okay, uh, activate your phone for me. I just got to check something out. And I go to whichever, if it's an iPhone or if it's an Android, <laughs> I'll just go and I'll download the Podbean app. <laughs> and I'll follow Project Dark Corona See for that? them. You know, What's take up? charge. Hey, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Do there that you. to your friends. There you, know? you go. Yeah. 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 Hey, look, I got something you got to listen to. There you go. <laughs> it's Project Dark Corona. Yeah, just say, uh, yeah, it's a, we're going to have family game night. I'm collecting all the phones. Uh, let me access them first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when are we going to have game time on Project Dark Corona uh, We're going to have to do another game night. Yeah. Yes. And, and do another giveaway on game night. What are we going to give away, though? Are we gonna give away some stickers? We can. Or what? Some uh decals for your vehicle or some of your windows window, window decals. decals, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to look back mm. at the uh talking about the Hopi prophecies. Oh, yes. We did a we did a game that it was a I, gra- got, I got I got so great. cracked up. I was just laughing and laughing. Why are you giving me the crickets? I'm talking. Yeah, he's talking. I, I'm not. That was my finger. Your finger. <laughs> your finger. You're giving me the finger after uh, thanking right? me so much. All right. I, you, I swear. What the heck? But uh, I don't think uh, my family is, has heard me laugh that much <laughs> in forever. And, you know, that's the reason I love coming around you guys. You know, you always make me feel good and welcomed and smiling and laughing and cutting up and uh, even though we do talk about some spooky things we and do. some serious things, we, we do like to have fun. That's it. And, you know, uh, that's what's great about it, right? It's like when we do these little get- giveaways sometimes, we'll do these little shows like, like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, sometimes it's just hilarious. And that one went into like triple overtime, didn't it? Yeah. It was like ta 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 So yeah. it was funny. It was great. Yeah, Jeff was like, hey, guys, I, I love it that y'all gave away my CD. I thought it was going to be like a five-minute, <laughs> you know, thing for questions, and it turns into 30, 40 minutes. Right? Okay. <laughs> it was awesome. Let's do remember Jeff Reagan from yes. the band Catalyst. Uh, awesome. he He is awesome. He's one of our, well, I should say, house band. Right. Uh, but he has some awesome CDs and, and go back and listen to the conspiracy theory episode that he was on just roughly a month ago. It, yeah. It's an awesome, awesome show. It was. And, and that show hit all kinds of records oh, for yeah. project dark Corona, not only on, uh, the most people in the chat room, but also the most, um, listens in a day. Mm-hmm. I mean, we hit all kinds of records with that. So, you know, uh, definitely go check it out because it was it was fantastic. ProjectDarkCorona.org. You can listen to it right now if you go click that button. Yes, it is. And if you're late to hearing this show, uh, it'll be uploaded here shortly. And yes. then you can listen to it as well. Absolutely. Same and, place. Yeah. <clears throat> and we want to thank everybody that listens to this show, um, whether you're a patron or not. Um, patrons have a special place in our heart, um, because, you know, they, they do help, um, fund the show and, uh, and, and everything. And, and we really appreciate those guys and gals. Um, but everybody that listens to this show is, um, 
is is special to us and uh, we appreciate every single one of you and uh, i hope that you continue to do this the same and and listen to us right jason oh yeah so this is the end of the show and uh, we want to thank everybody for listening and uh, and for participating tonight. And we want to see you next week. Next week, we're going to be, who did you say we're going to have? We're going to be talking to Morgan Daimler. She's going Morgan to be. Morgan Daimler. Oh, oh yes. yeah, the fairy girl. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so she's going to be talking about fairies. fairies and and, uh, she's got Irish folklore, she's, paganism, all kinds of stuff. She's very prolific. She, prolific. Yeah, at least. It's at least fifty-eight books, I think, that's that she's fantastic. published. Wow. I mean, she's very prolific. That's, that's, I mean, I, I mean, I would love for her to come on a few times because she is into so many things. There's no way two hours is enough to talk to her. <laughs> that's that's the best guess to get. <laughs> so, so we want to thank everybody for showing up and listening, and uh, everybody that listens to this, even in the podcast form that didn't get to show up in, in the, uh, in the live chat room. And, uh, you know, remember next week, Saturday, 8 PM Eastern standard time, come and listen to us. Um, participate in the chat room. We give stuff away all the time. Um, probably not next week, but we do give stuff away all the time. And sometimes without even being provoked to do so, we just say like, Hey, guess what? You just got a shirt. <laughs> so, you know, um, not saying that that's the reason you should listen to us, but you know what? But it's you're giving them love. You that's really right. Appreciate. It. Um, we do appreciate everybody, every single person that listens to us, and uh, and so uh, thank you, thank you. All right, y'all have a good night. All right, we out of here. See ya. You're listening to Project Dark Corona Podcast. Brought to you by Project Dark Corona. Coming to you live from an undisclosed location deep in a bunker in the Appalachian Mountains. Bringing you the strange and unknown with your host, David Reagan and Jason Scott. You're listening to Project Dark Corona Podcast.